A football Saturday in Ole Miss officially begins on the Grove with the traditional Rebel Walk. Stung by the arrest of three freshmen on Thursday. Today, Lane Kiffin and his Tennessee Vols focus on football. The passion and pageantry in the SEC is unmatched. It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS, Tennessee, and Ole Miss. For the 63rd time, it's Tennessee and Ole Miss. They'll battle today in Oxford. And here come the Rebels. And the orange and white of Tennessee. With three weeks of play in the regular season, Tennessee is trying to gain ground in the SEC East on Georgia and South Carolina. We check the West. Ole Miss is chasing after LSU and the Auburn Tigers. And hi, everybody. Craig Bowler Jack along with Steve Burline. We're so glad you're with us here in Oxford. This game is all about capturing a elite, an elite bowl game. And let's start with Ole Miss. And Steve, when you talk Ole Miss, it all starts with their quarterback, Jevin Sneed. It really does, Craig, start with Jevin Sneed, the quarterback that everybody had such high hopes for, rated it by many people as the number one quarterback prospect in the country. Well, been a little bit of an enigma this year. He's been inconsistent, especially in the SEC, where he's thrown seven touchdowns against 11 interceptions. Well, he's going to have his work cut out for him today against a very good Tennessee defense led by outstanding senior linebacker Rico McCoy and then the returning 2008 SEC Defensive Player of the Year, Eric Berry. He is unbelievable. We'll see a lot of him today. Stay tuned. We've got Tennessee and Ole Miss. It's coming up on CBS. Welcome back to Oxford. Terrific November morning here. Weather 60 degrees at game time, and the forecast is partly cloudy. 63rd meeting between the Vols and the Rebels. Tennessee has won 12 straight in the series. And this game, an all SEC college football game, is brought to you in crystal clear CBS high definition. Tennessee won the toss. They chose to defer in the second half, so Ole Miss will take the opening kickoff, and Chad Cunningham is set to kick it away. For the Tennessee Volunteers, Tennessee rolls in with a record of five and four, two and three in the SEC East, while Mississippi is six and three and two and three in the SEC West. And we are underway. Beautiful day in Oxford. That ball is going to bounce out of bounds at the ten-yard line. Not the way Tennessee would like to start this game. As we look at the quarterback. For Ole Miss, Jevin Sneed, the junior out of Stephenville, Texas. 17 touchdowns on the season. Two last week in a runaway win over Northern Arizona. So that ball bounces out of the 10. Steve, you take it at the 40 when you kick it out of bounds. And Ole Miss in great field position to start this game. Oh, Houston Nutt, if you were offered him that before the game, he would have said, heck yeah, we'll take that ball at the 40-yard line to start it out. Trying to get this crowd into it with a good start. We, we talked about it with the coaches and everybody else. Jevin Sneed needs to get off to a quick start. And there's that quick high percentage pass as he throws it a flat. Dexter McCluster and picks up six up to the 46-yard line. As we check out our starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. So a five-yard gain for McCluster. The senior out of Largo, Florida. Sneed on a rollout, second down and short. Throws up and caught at the 39-yard line. And Hodge, who has been red hot of late, a career-high 169 yards last week, makes the grab and a first down. Let's check that Tennessee defense. Up front, the run stuffer, Dan Williams. 6'3", 327, 43 stops on the season. The linebackers can all run. As you mentioned, Steve, Rico McCoy, the best of the bunch in that secondary. Eric Berry owns 13 career interceptions. Prentice Wagner starts in place of Jansen Jackson. And a good start in round. One tackle to beat. Bumped out of bounds at the 15-yard line.
Jesse Grandy. Well, we heard from Houston Nutt that Jesse Grandy, number 10 right here, the true freshman, is a guy that really is starting to play with some confidence. He's got some special ability. You see his open field running ability. He's not a big guy, but boy, if there's a seam or a crease, he is going to hit it and he's gone. Opening possessions in nine games this season. Ole Miss, four touchdowns, two field goals, two punts, and an interception. And one of their finest openings of the season. Little draw for him. McCluster busted up the middle. Touchdown, Rebels. Fifteen-yard run. And how about Tennessee's defense? They've allowed only one touchdown all year on opponents' opening possessions. It goes all the way back to the Ohio game. And how about the start by Ole Miss? That that was not an expected start from my from my perspective, Craig. I'll tell you, this Tennessee defense has been playing very well lately. Ole Miss made it look too easy. McCluster, McCluster, so fresh after playing only two plays last week against Northern Arizona. The extra point by Sheen splits the uprights. And Ole Miss takes the opening drive, 60 yards, four plays, 131 off the clock, and the seas opened up for McCluster. Ole Miss on top here in Oxford by seven. Game day is one big family get-together here at Ole Miss as young and old gather in the Grove. If you're driving here, watch your speed. On the Ole Miss campus, it's 18 miles per hour. Archie Manning's old number. The football complex is located on Manning Way, 1810 Manning Way to be precise. Archie and son Eli's Ole Miss numbers. Life sure is good on the Ole Miss campus. How about four plays, 60 yards, a minute 31 off the clock, and McCluster fresh from a week ago. 15-yard burst up the middle, and Ole Miss strikes first. McCluster is kind of a hybrid back, Steve. He goes as flanker. He'll run now mostly as a tailback in his offensive set for Ole Miss. Yeah, they, they found something they feel comfortable with. They don't like, because of his size, to, to pound the ball up in there with him 25 to 30 times a game. But Dexter McCluster has shown that he is too effective not to be lined up behind Jevin Steve back there. And he showed you right there in that first drive when he brings. Little terrific kick five yards deep. Rogan puts a knee down. No return at Tennessee. We'll start their first drive of the 20. All right, Craig, watch this right here. That's Herman Lathers and LaMarcus Thompson. With Jevin Sneed's action going this way on a sprint draw, the play comes back. Watch their pursuit to the left-hand side with that sprint draw action. They get caught up, and it gives the offensive line the great angle to come back behind here for our man down there, Dexter McCluster. Easy touchdown, but great influence by the design of the play, trying to pull the Tennessee defense to over-pursue. So Crompton will start shotgun. Ontario Hardesty, the senior out of New Bern, North Carolina, right beside him. Quick throw to the flat, pop, and a loss of two. Hancock made the catch, and Cassius Vaughn with the tackle. Second down, and let's call it 12. As we look at the quarterback, Jonathan Crompton, the senior, terrific game last week. 331 yards in that win against Memphis, five touchdowns. How about a passer rating of nearly 242? And boy, Tennessee fans have come to Oxford to watch the Volunteers. Second down 12, shotgun again for Crompton. Takes a look, goes through his reads, pressure throws, and is caught. Johnson, the fullback, stacked up on second effort, maybe got up to the 22-yard line. As we look at the Chick-fil-A lineups, of Tennessee offensive line has allowed just 10 sacks in the left tackle Chris Scott making his 37th start Crompton shares the football does he ever favorite targets are Gerald Jones and Denarius Moore the Ole Miss third defense they've held their opponent to 26 percent on third downs this season that is number one in the SEC Tennessee needs eight yards to keep this drive alive. Ball batted up and incomplete. Now, Ole Miss.
Memphis's defense, they are good. Tillman and Lockett anchor the two ends. Lockett's been ill over the weekend, 103-degree fever, trying to give it a go today. Linebackers Trahan, Cornell, and Walker, the free safety Kendrick Lewis, the team leader in tackles, and blocked a field goal last week against Northern Arizona. You talk about how good this old Miss B is. They've only given up six points in the first quarter this year. A field goal to Alabama and a field goal to Auburn. That's it. Well, so far, Tennessee's kicking game off their off their game. A punt out of bound around the 40-yard line. Ole Miss with the ball when we come back up seven. Well, trouble at Tennessee this week. Link Kiffin's prize freshman recruits, Nikise Richardson, Jansen Jackson, Mike Edwards, were arrested early Thursday morning on charges of attempted robbery at a Knoxville convenience store. Situation that's really shocked this program. This morning, our Steve Berline talked to head coach Kiffin. Uh, coach, obviously an unwelcome distraction this week. What, what can you tell us about the incident and the future of the players involved? Well, this is something that we're dealing with, and we don't have all our information in. I know that accountability and discipline are the theme of our program. We've been here over 11 months. This is our first incident we've had to deal with, and so this is a very serious issue, one we'll deal with as we, as we get all our information in. Have you had a chance to speak to the three players, and, and if so, what did you tell them? Well, I would never um, disclose our conversation with our players. Um, just know that, that we didn't bring the three of them with us. This is very serious. They've been a part of none of our team activities since this happened, and, and we'll get all our information in. Has the team's preparation now been affected by any of the incidents this week as they've gone along? How, how have they prepared and have they been affected at all? Well, our team's been very focused. They've had a great week of practice. Um, these are three true freshmen that have played a significant role for us as of late, so um, we'll miss them from that standpoint. But we need guys to step up. We've gone through a lot of adversity this year with injuries, and so this is the next thing. Well, Tennessee leaves the three players in question at home as – Ole Miss goes back on the offense, and it's incomplete around the 39-yard line. Good pass as Pat Patterson, the freshman at a make of Mississippi, had the ball, then dropped it. Steve, interesting comments. Lane Kiffin just trying to ease through his first issue as the head coach of Tennessee. No doubt about it. It's been a very, very interesting week, to say the least, for Lane Kiffin. We, I spoke to him a little bit before we did the interview, and the bottom line is that he, he, they're investigating this, and they're going to find out exactly what happened. They don't want to jump to the gu jump the gun and get ahead of themselves, but very concerned about what happened and, and what it means to this program. Shotgun, Sneed, ball is batted down. Who got that? Big offensive lineman with the catch. That was uh, Dave Rongerald, the senior. Well, no, this is the first not not positive play by uh, the Ole Miss defense. I, I think if you ask if you, uh, Ole Miss offense, excuse me, I think if you ask Devin Sneed, uh, a completion is good. It's always good, but uh, that's not the way you draw it up, that's for sure. I was impressed with Gerald's hands. 6'2", 305. Great points. Again, shotgun for Sneed. High percentage passes. Again, McCluster loves to have the open space and does so many things. Weaves his way to the 45-yard line and the Rebels on the move once again. Now you can see, Craig, high, high priority for this offense, Ken Austin and Houston Nutt, to get out there. Look at all this space out there. Give Dexter McCluster the ball in open field, and I'll tell you what, most of the time, something good is going to happen. He's a hard man to bring down when he has a little bit of room to work with. What did Houston not say to us? Playmakers have to make plays in this game. So far, McCluster is making big plays after big plays. It's a beautiful cut. But Tennessee pursues up front and chops McCluster down at the 46-yard line. And what do you say? Let's go above the line. Well, it all starts as we talked about with Jevin Sneed for the Ole Miss offense. As Jevin goes, so goes this team. When he plays well, as he is today, this team is hard to stop. Now, on the other side of the ball for Tennessee, we have not seen them get physical yet. We have to see what they've been known for the last five weeks. Aggressive, attacking, physical defense, making things happen, forcing the action. I expect Monty Kiffin, the legendary NFL coach, father of Lane Kiffin, to get this defense going for Tennessee. Ole Miss will take a timeout. So a timeout in Oxford. Ole Miss up seven on CBS. in Oxford, the Rebels 7, 
Vol Zero here in Oxford. Aerial coverage of the FCC on CBS is provided by DirecTV. Claude Hemingway Stadium, 60,000 strong, and I see a lot of orange in the stands today along mixed in with that rebel red. Lots of it. They travel well, as we like to say in the business, and, they, and they'll let you know they're here, too, if anything good happens to Tennessee. Second down. So second down 11. Play action rolling out smooth. Tucks that football, slips and slides back to the line of scrimmage at the 45. McCluster and Patterson split wide for Ole Miss. Shotgun again for Sneed. Well, that pocket collapsed and coming strong from the left side. Big Ben Martin, number 99. Well, you're going to see the pressure coming right off this side. Boom, straight up the field. A nice little stunt. Very well run stunt. West Brown and Ben Martin came underneath. Boy, great job. You're going to see De Jevin Sneed does not like to get hit like that. If Tennessee can keep that pressure on him, Jevin Sneed, it'll be interesting to see how he handles it. But that's exactly what this Tennessee defense needed at this point. Tyler Campbell set the punt, averaging nearly 44 yards a kick. That second best in the SEC. That ball going to death. Tennessee didn't bring the rush, and how about the punt? Into the end zone. And the freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas, keeping his boys in what could have been trouble. Tennessee will have the ball on the 20 when we come back. SEC moment presented by Sonic, 1983 the year, the last time Ole Miss beat Tennessee. Ole Miss quarterback Kelly Powell hitting Jamie Holder for a four-yard touchdown, giving Ole Miss an early 10-7 lead. Now, this game turned into a defensive slugfest as Ole Miss safety Joe Hall came up with the biggest play of the game, stripping Randall Morris to help preserve a 13-10 win for Billy Brewer's Rebels, the year 1983. There's back to Trahan, fine outside linebacker, one of the team captains. He's been beat up, Steve, bottom line. Ankle had some swelling, but he had to take up and play this afternoon. There, there was question right up till kickoff about whether he was going to be able to go today. His ankle really swelled up on him yesterday and really was causing him a lot of problems. Tennessee's first offensive series, three and out, and look at the swarm of Rebels. A loss of one back to the 19, and let's go back above the line. Now, Tennessee, I think it all starts. They've been playing very well offensively. The key, they must run Monterio hard at Steve. They gotta run him hard, they gotta feed him the football, get him going. On defense for Ole Miss, they're the best in the SEC, as you stated, Greg, on third down. They gotta keep Tennessee in third and long situations, and then try and come after him, cause havoc, Cause all kinds of problems. They're the best in the SEC at that. A loss of one and setting up the screen out of the flat hardest, Steve. And very much like McCluster for Ole Miss, Steve. You get him into open field, watch out. He's a terrific back, a senior from New Bern, North Carolina. Well, I think uh, Lane Kiffin and his staff, Jim Chaney, offensive quarter, a little disappointed to get more out of that play. It was set up very, very well. The offensive line for Tennessee timed it up extremely well. Let the pressure come from this aggressive Ole Miss defense. Got the ball to Ontario. It was a shoestring tackle that brought him down. Saved a huge play. Obviously lined up straight behind Trotkin. Wants to throw back across the grain and incomplete. Now that is a rule. When you're teaching how to play this game, stay at home. You don't roll with the quarterback, you stay with your man. And Luke Stocker, boy, he was shaded, and Marche Green never let him go. Excellent job by Marche Green. I, and I'll tell you again, I think Lane Kiffin and Jim Chaney very disappointed. That's a play that was designed for that particular situation. They were expecting to get a heck of a lot more out of that, catch Ole Miss off guard. But, boy, Marche Green, very disciplined, maintaining his responsibility. Cunningham's first punt travel, 36 yards. Better kick, heading back, Marche Green, an old baby. Taken down at the 18, they're gonna mark him at the 19 yard line. This drive starts at the 21 yard line, a little quick hit kick. And the official, the line judge, jumps out. And the penalty flag is dropped after the catch by Grandy. Uh, Before the snap, false start, number 79 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. 
That's Bobby Massey, the freshman. Get a complete wrap-up of the day's college football action, including expert analysis from Dennis Dodd. Online tomorrow at CBSSports.com. Andy Hartman, the fullback, number 43, trots on the field. As Ole Miss looks at first and 15. Clock at 7.05 here in the opening quarter. Boy, did Ole Miss start with a four-play drive, 60 yards, and a cluster from 15 yards out to take the lead. The cluster picks one tackle, tries to hug the sideline, and out of bounds, we'll mark him at the 24-yard line. How about the cluster start? How about this guy? You can see he's exciting every time he touches the football, whether you throw it to him on that little swing pass or he, you run the sprint draw, cutting back against the grain, catching everybody off guard, and then another pass play. Get it to him in the open field. Watch what he does. Houston Nutt told us that he thinks that this kid is as fast as Darren McFadden. The Arkansas running back he had now with the uh, Oakland Raiders and maybe even a little bit quicker. He just absolutely loves his attitude, though. All purpose back from the eye, quick throw, and traffic incomplete, and off the hands of Shea Hodge. Well, out of the gate in a hurry, and this is what Coach Nutt said to us yesterday in our meetings. Listen, I'm going to give, I'm going to build and give Snead confidence. First possession, four plays, Snead two for two. Second possession, six plays, okay, they punt, but Snead again passing the ball, sharing the football on the field. It was emphasized very, very significantly by Houston Nutt that he really felt that when Jevin Snead gets off to a good start, this offense really clicks. He's he started out slow in a few games, and the result has not been very good. John Gunn, Snead, tucks and runs. That pocket collapses, and he is taken and rolled down at the 27-yard line. That big front of Ben Martin and Chris Walker of Tennessee with the game tackle, and that brings up fourth down. Well, a good job of, of, of Jevin Snead tucking the ball and realizing that, hey, a little bit of pressure coming, the pocket's caving in, even though they're only rushing three guys. I don't want to stand back here and have something bad happen to my own end. I'm going to tuck it, get what I can get, maybe get a first down. If not, we punt the ball, protect the field position. Tyler Campbell set the punt inside his own 15-yard line. Dennis Rogan awaits around the 34. He's got a good snap, end-over-end kick. Rogan waits for it at the 33-yard line. Rogan tries to start his step up the middle and is near midfield at the 49-yard line. Really good field position for the first time today for this Tennessee offense. And this is the Tennessee offense that had not been held all season to a three and out on their opening possession. Well, their first two possessions, first two. three and out. So they've been very explosive lately. How, how explosive, 132 points in the last three games. And off, Hardesty weaving his way. Breaks one tackle and another. Watch out at the 30, 25, and bumped out of bounds. Actually, bumped at the 27. And I do see a flag, a 24-yard gain. Marche Green, Johnny Brown chased him down. Well, you can see right there, Ontario Hardesty, boy, he, not only does he have the speed to get to the outside, he's a physical running back. He's a guy that will give you the stiff arm. Another call from Steve Shaw. After the play, Dead ball, personal foul, number eight on the defense. A penalty will be half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Marche Green. Uh, you'll see right there, nice seam, and he can make people miss, but watch the physical again. He's 215 pounds. We compared him to Dexter McCluster, and here's the late hit. The penalty was obviously out of bounds, and boom. Marche Green made the great play on third down a series ago, being disciplined right there. Completely lost his discipline to the tune of 15 more yards for Tennessee. Two wide receivers, top of your screen. Again, hard to see your long back. We're going to stretch it out. Hard to see. Didn't break the tackle and drop for a two yard loss back at the 16 yard line. Gerald Poe made that initial hit. And well, staggered Hardesty. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Craig. Another area this Ole Miss defense excels, and we saw firsthand against Alabama a few weeks back, the red zone defense. 31 possessions this year, only nine touchdowns. That's 29% of the time. That's number two in the SEC. They tighten up. Against, against Alabama, they were put in terrible position all day long, held them to five field goals, only one touchdown. Second down, 13, Crompton in the pocket, throws a dart over the middle, touchdown!
Jeff caught him. Making his third grab of the season, the senior with his first touchdown of the year. What a throw, Crompton threw a bullet across the middle. Oh, great, great timing on the call, but you'll see Cotton, he gives a little, little head fake to the outside, perfect coverage, very nicely set up by Jim Chaney and this Tennessee offense and a good, strong, solid, poised throw by our man Crompton. Daniel Lincoln, the point after attempt is good. He's now hit 32 of 33 on the season. And Crompton tosses his 22nd touchdown of the year. Those numbers lead the SEC. 7-7, Tennessee Ole Miss on CBS. Steve on their first two series, and in fact, two straight threes and out. How about three plays, 51 yards, just over a minute off the clock, and a great pass from Crompton to his tight end, Cottom. And we're tied up at seven. Aided by the uh, personal foul on Marche Green as well. Now that was the first first quarter touchdown allowed since last season's Cotton Bowl by a very stingy Ole Miss defense. And only the sixth passing touchdown allowed by the Ole Miss defense this whole season. They're not used to people scoring on them in the red zone, and especially not in the first quarter. But we're tied up at seven as Tennessee is set to kick away. Cunningham teed up at the 30-yard line. Waiting at the five is Grandy up the middle and is tackled down at the 27. Well, Thursday on Survivor, a new immunity idol hidden somewhere on the island. Will it be found and will it affect the game? It's a new Survivor Thursday only right here on CBS. Well, what a day in Oxford. Steve, usually in mid-November, you're thinking sleet, snow, rain, all the above, and over 60 degrees. Sun is out, partly cloudy skies. Good can ask for a better afternoon. And that sun is not messing around. It is hot. I mean, it is hitting us right in the forehead. And Tell you what, what a great day for football, though. The cluster lines up behind Sneed. 7 7 here in Oxford. Play action pass. Will flip out to the flat. And the ball is grabbed and pushed forward by Brandon Bolden. So Bolden pushes the pile up to around the 34 yard line. This is a staple for the Ole Miss offense. You're going to see Bolden lined up at fullback. He's going to shoot right out to the flat, and you're going to see Dexter McCluster come up here and chop the big defensive end right there, get his hands down. That allows Jevin Sneed to have a clear lane to pop this ball out to the flat. They get a lot of mileage out of that play, just tossing it to Bolden in the flat. Hey, did I mention McCluster's 5'9", 170? It's, a, it's very impressive. That was a... A fairly large man on the outside that he took down. That was Gerald Williams, a 250-pound defensive end. Pitch out in the cluster. Knocked down at the 36-yard line by Rogan, the left corner. How about just two plays last week? You know, Houston Nutt told us, listen, the kid is a talent, but I worry about his health. And we want to make sure he is fresh and healthy down this three-game stretch. He allowed him two plays last week against Northern Arizona. And he also stated that, you know, he loves his attitude because he wants to carry the ball 30-plus times a game, but he just doesn't think his body can hold up. Third down and short, caught it one. Shotgun, little quick, quick pass to the near side, and right on the fingertips, Furbia Allen, the redshirt freshman. Pine Bluff, Arkansas, the hometown with a sixth grab, and that was a beauty. And that was uh, to pick up the first down, a huge grab to keep the chains moving. Houston Nutt knows it. Good job bringing it in by Furbia Allen, selling out. And a good good spot for that football, too, by Jevin Sneed. You know, if you're a quarterback, which you were, it's good to be 6'4 if you're a tight end. It is good. Heck, yeah, you, <laughs> you can see him a little bit better when he's got that height out there. The cluster makes that cut 40, 45, 50, and then steps out of bounds. How quick is that motor? Well, and you talk about, we talked about Furby Allen had been a big tight end is such an asset. Well, Dexter McCluster, just the opposite. He's so small that he gets hidden behind some of those big blockers, and it's hard to see him. And if you blink for one second, he's shown he can take it the distance, make you pay the price. A 20-yard gain by McCluster, and he's got the dreadlocks flowing from behind. You know, that was like a six-stride, 20-yard gain. He's now carried the ball five times for 42 yards. 
He's the man in motion. On the rollout, Jevin Sneed has a man sliding. Grab inside the 30-yard line. Shay Hodge with the grab move to change first down Ole Miss. Uh, good, good design of the play again. Ken Austin right there with a good little play action and almost a fake roll back to the right side by Jevin Sneed. Good grab going down. Shea Hodge got down very low to make that catch. Boy, it almost hit the ground. And Jevin Sneed standing strong in the pocket. You To play at the next level, to play at this level in the SEC, you've got to be able to take a hit. Hand off Bolden for the mixing McCluster with Bolden. Trying to throw a little Hodge and Furbia Allen in on this drive. That was the Wild Rebel, Craig, where they had Bolden lined up at quarterback, and Jevin Sneed split out to the left side. Houston Nutt, of course, made that very famous in Arkansas with Darren McFadden at quarterback for many years. And right there, Bolden showing he can do it. They'll line up McCluster as they are right now in the backfield. Jevin Sneed split out to the bottom to the right-hand side of the screen. Seventh play of this drive. McCluster turns the corner. Ten, five, dives, touchdown, Ole Miss. Twenty-three yards, and McCluster scoring his second touchdown here in the quarter. I'll tell you what, we saw a lot of this wild rebel offense run the last couple weeks, or, or, or not the last couple weeks. We saw we saw a lot of it on Friday night at practice. It looked like they were going to use it quite extensively. And right there, boy, great, great job getting to the edge by Dexter McCluster. Gene, they tried the extra point. It's up and good. The kick is good. The score is good. What a start by Ole Miss, and what a start by Dexter McCluster. A 15-yard score to start this game, and now rumbles in off the left side. Takes the direct snap. Outruns the Tennessee secondary and trots in. Seven plays, 73 yards, and Ole Miss leads Tennessee 14 7. 73 yards, and McCluster, 23 yard run around the left end. Well, you're going to see a great job. Bolden's going to come in motion across this way to get the flow, but Andy Harbin, the fullback, is going to come around the edge right here. Jonathan Jerry, normally the right tackle, is going to pull around to the left side as well, and a super job securing that left side, given. Our man Dexter McCluster the chance to get to the edge. And once he gets there, it's a thing of beauty for Ole Miss. He knows how to get to that goal line. Eight touches for McCluster, 87 yards. But it's the subtle things too, Craig. You know, they move Jonathan Jerry, a normal right tackle, into right guard because of his athletic ability. They wanted him to be the one pulling to get to that edge. There's a reason for all these different moves. Ritter. With the kick, about at the three-yard line is Oku. Straight up the middle and down at the 30-yard line. 14-7, Ole Miss pitch near side. Look at how Ole Miss strings it out. To the linebackers, like very much like Tennessee, are so fast, Cornell chased down Hardesty. Yeah, great job of pursuit by Jonathan Cornell. Getting over there, stringing, and, and, and give credit again to Marche Green, the cornerback out there who was able to hold his ground and keep from giving Hardesty that lane to pop up inside. And then Cornell did the rest with his great speed pursuing the ball. I'm a little surprised at the scoring here in the opening quarter. It's 14 7. Both these defenses nationally ranked in the top 25. A little quick throw near side. Gerald Jones with a grab his 29th of the season. Uh, the junior out of Oklahoma City. So a wild, wild first quarter. Two touchdowns. Mike McCluster has given the Ole Miss Rebels a 14 to 7 lead. Crompton to Cottom to tie it in. The score for Tennessee. Don't know if the balls will get this playoff or not. Down to six. Down to five. And they will not get this playoff. That ends the first quarter here in Oxford. Ole Miss on top of Tennessee, 14 to 7. We'll return to Oxford after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship.
Welcome back to Oxford as we start the second quarter. Ole Miss on top of Tennessee, 14-7. Great Bowler Jack, Steve Irvine. Glad you're with us on CBS this afternoon. Steve, let's talk about the two quarterbacks. Christian Nutt went with some early confidence with Jevin Sneed. He produced two touchdowns. His, his arm looks good, lively, and Crofton seems to get his rhythm. He's getting his rhythm now at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, both these quarterbacks, so key for them to play well, for their offenses to be successful. Crofton, as you said, looked like he warmed up a little bit. That's that last drive, the touchdown pass will be great for his confidence. It's a big third down situation right here. We've illustrated throughout so far that Ole Miss is spectacular on third down. It'd be nice for Tennessee to get a good conversion here, keep the chains going, keep that confidence up. Now the Rebels, number one of the SEC in third down defense is 26% success rate. Tennessee, though, breaks their back a bit up to the 44 as Gerald Jones makes the grab in traffic. And Crompton threw that ball between McGee and Marche Green. And it was right on time, Craig. You're going to see right there Gerald Jones coming up, just running a straight, quick, up and in pattern inside between the linebackers. That ball had to be thrown exactly when it was thrown, exactly where it was thrown to be successful. Tennessee's fourth first down of the first half. And you saw Crompton, he's beginning just to pick it up. Seeing the field a little bit better, crisp. That one again in traffic, and at midfield, Gerald Jones once again is on the board. Leewood is updating all day long. Right up the middle is Bryce Brown. Tackles the front of Ole Miss. Close to a first down. We're going to mark it, and they're going to move the chains. How good has this Crompton been? Well, I'll tell you. First four games, not too solid right there, but you look at the last five games, that is pretty impressive. 14 touchdowns, only two interceptions. That's one interception every 79 attempts. This guy has really found his rhythm. He credits the genius of Lane Kiffin and offensive coordinator Jim Chaney for that. He said it's easy when you got two geniuses calling the plays. <laughs> Hard to see. Tackled by Cassius Vaughn, the right corner. And I'll tell you, we've seen this spin move a couple of times. He threw one against South Carolina that went for a touchdown. And I'm, I mean, he puts guys to sleep with that move. And it takes a lot of confidence to turn your back, give up your back like that and make the move. But he does it instinctively, and he does it well. Yeah, he's closing in on a 1,000-yard season on the ground. Good anticipation, waited for the blocker, and pops it near the first down around the 36-yard line. Eighth play of this drive coming up as Cornell, the middle linebacker, with a tackle. Well, we, we heard accolades from Jim Chaney and Lane Kiffin about the front seven of this Ole Miss defense. Well, they're running right at him right now, right into the teeth of it. Pretty impressive trying to make a statement, getting physical up in there. Lockett, Kentrell Lockett, who's been battling a high fever, is trying to go every other series, number 40, and he's in on that pile around the 35, and it's going to be close. Lockett and Green in on the tackle, and here come the chains. Yeah, I don't know if he got that. It was uh, maybe a second effort. Crompton, as he was falling, you saw him kind of nudge forward a little bit, but he was hit in the backfield. Good pressure by that old Miss defense right up the middle. Tennessee averages 168 yards a game on the ground. Ole Miss, their defense gives up 136. And first down. So the drive rolls on. And we talked about Lockett with the fever, fever, but also their other defensive end. And what a fine player. Greg Hardy out, had wrist surgery on Thursday. He's been beat up throughout his career with hand, foot, and other injuries. But this, uh, this young man, 26 and a half career sacks he's done for the season and he missed a lot of the season last year oh wait the injuries have been very unfortunate it hurts his defense but i'm impressed with, with the courage of control Lockett to be out here playing today play action crockton well that lane collapsed looked to be big gain a big gainer for crockton but he's tripped up around the 31 yard line by lamarck armor lamarck armor and kendrick lewis Close the gap there to number one, the free safety, who has never been one to shy away from an opportunity to come up and make a hit. You know, looking back at that replay, I was thinking maybe about you. Did you see how smart that quarterback was? He wasn't tripped up. He decided to go down on his own. That's how you survive, right? Uh, you know what? If you don't, if you don't learn that yourself, <laughs> they're going to teach you. A defense like this will teach you. You need to get down when you get when you get what you can get. Tenth play of this drive. 
Big hole, second effort, spinning. Bryce Brown. So he's built very much like uh, Montario Hardesty. Six footers, 215, 20 pounds. And that's the future of Tennessee, uh, the Tennessee ground game. No doubt about it. One of, if not the top recruit in the country last year. Lane Kiffin kind of pulled off a coup getting him to come to Tennessee. And boy, they have high hopes for him. And it's a great situation for him to have a model of how to get the job done like Montario Harvesty, a senior, the veteran, the captain of the team. Great experience, good man to learn from. Brown came in with 400 yards rushing early. Five yards of carry for average. Play action pass over the top. Touchdown. Cropped into more. 25 yards. And Steve, the play action is what sold it for Tennessee. And that, that is, you hit it right on the nose, Craig. Old Miss Tyrone Nix was talking to us. If we don't shut down that running game point, early, we're going to get Lincoln. a big dose of their play action game, which is where Crofton and these receivers make most of their plays. That right there was a perfect example. An extra point by Lincoln. The kick is Up and good. through, and we're tied at 14. 14. 11 plays, 14. 70 yards. Second touchdown throw of the season or of the game by Crompton, 23rd of the year. And Crompton, after a slow start, warming up on a November afternoon in Oxford, 14 all. Now we got a shootout in Oxford, Tennessee, Ole Miss tied at 14, 11 plays for the Vols. They go 70 yards, and Steve Crompton, four for four on that drive, 50 yards. Well, watch what happens with the play act. Here's Kendrick Lewis and Johnny Brown, the two safeties. You're going to see Hardesty coming up to the right side. Watch them come flying up. And then it's very easy for Denarius Moore to get over the top, and, and it, it's over right from the snap. You can see them come flying up. Look at that. And then now Denarius Moore, the damage is already done, and the ball thrown just in the right spot again by Jonathan Crompton. One mistake against a good offense in the right play at the right time, you will pay the price. 25-yard strike. Crompton to Moore. We're tied at 14. So Cunningham is set to kick, and Jesse Grandy awaits the kickoff. Kick is away, angles it to the far side. Grandy takes a two-yard line. Up to 10, 15, up the middle, 20. Stacked up and driven back around the 24-yard line. They'll give him. They'll, they'll give them the 25, and tomorrow on CBS, 60 Minutes has unearthed a lot of big stories, but when it comes to dinosaurs, this could be the biggest. Check it out tomorrow on 60 Minutes here on CBS. Here comes Jevin Sneed. What a year he had last season. Finished so strong, as Steve, you mentioned about all the hype. And, of course, don't forget Ole Miss ranked number four in the preseason polls. Got up, got up to number four, exactly right. Then the, the crushing loss to South Carolina and the humiliating loss to, to Alabama. The cluster pedals his way down to the 40-yard line, a 15-yard gain. Tim Wisconsin, as you know, looking for the third straight home win against the Wolverines. Tim had to throw that Notre Dame. Yes, he did. There. I think that was a jab. The cluster dancing, maybe a yard up to the 41-yard line. 22, Dexter McCluster to about the 41. You know, the key in this game, if Ole Miss wants to continue to move the football, Tennessee, Steve, sooner or than later, will make that adjustment and key on the cluster. No, no doubt about it. They have to. I mean, that, that is the key. Jevin Sneed told us in our, in our talk with him on Friday, he said, Dexter McCluster is the spark in our offense. He is the one that lights the fire, gets it going. If, if, he, if we can get the ball to him and he can start making plays, boy, look out, because everything else just seems to become so much more easy. The cluster, eight carries, 80 yards, two touchdowns. From the shotgun, Sneed throws in the flat, caught Bolden. And the sophomore from Baton Rouge with the catch. The strong side, Sam linebacker, Greg King, with the tackle for Tennessee. Nice job by Jevin Sneed. They're picking up the blitz. They came with a Rico McCoy blitz and right to see. He was unblocked, but Jevin Sneed knew exactly where his safety valve was. Bolden slipping out of the backfield right where Rico McCoy came from. Jevin Sneed calmly picks that throw up and, and they make a nice, a nice gain on second down. 
top of your screen, Marquise Summers, number 16. Sneed, little option. Put the ball in the belly, pulled it out, past midfield to the 49 yard line. Well, Tennessee had the right defense called Eric Berry to safety number 14. You're going to see him right here was in position to make this tackle. He's the all everything safety for Tennessee playing up a lot more in the in the defensive front forming an eight man front for Tennessee this year. He should have been able to make that tackle a little bit more aggressively maybe preventing Jevin Sneed from making this even close. Now come the change. You heard a few boos come around the stadium. I think the spot was in dispute. And it's that much. That much. You know, looking at it, I don't know where the knee went down from where we're sitting, but it looked like he had pushed himself past the 50, the midfield mark, but they mark it back just inside that 50. They're showing it up on the replay screen. Yeah, it looked to me like he definitely got across that line. I I can't, again, we can't, we can't tell where that knee hit the ground, but not a favorable spot for sure. Third down, inches. Fourth and inches, um, pardon me, and uh, move it. Play is under further review. Uh, here we go. So now they'll go and take a look. Replay official Steve Landis. And now they don't want it. They don't, because if it does come <laughs> back sure. to be short, they got to get it on fourth down again now. Right there, you, Jevin Sneed picks up the first down. You figure they'd probably just take that result instead of having to go do it again, possibly. Hard to see exactly. I mean, he definitely crossed the 50 yard line but I think once the call had been made Jevin Sneed and company would have preferred just to forget about what had happened the previous play let's just move on but I don't know if they're going to have an angle where they can actually overturn it well, and award the first down exactly right you know I'm trying to sift through all the legs and it is difficult to see where Snead actually where the knee went down, but the lean was very much inside Tennessee territory. Well, I'm assuming they're going to have to try and convert again on fourth down, which really is not what Houston Nutt wanted. Houston Nutt, second year, nine and four a year ago. Cotton Bowl victory, SEC Coach of the Year after a long, long run at Arkansas. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It'll be fourth down. <laughs> you got to do it all over again. What a what a bad break. Now it's only it's only an issue if, if Tennessee holds up now and keeps Ole Miss from converting this fourth down. On the year, Ole Miss has made just under 50 percent. Seven out of 15 times they've they've converted these fourth down situations. Need at 220 keeps the football the market at the 49 and a half so the drive will continue and he gets up hobbling I, I can tell you what Craig as a former quarterback as you stated and I was not I was not much of a runner myself but the quarterbacks do not like the quarterback sneak very much once in a while it's okay but when you got to do it two times in a row against a defense that knows it's coming they're taking shots at the quarterback. I'm telling you, they're not treating you like you're one of their buddies. <laughs> they're trying to hurt you whenever they get the opportunity. Need 6'3, 220. Junior out of Stephenville, Texas. The first down this inside Tennessee territory. Look at that. Stop and go. Around the corner across McCuster at the 40. And runs out of bounds at the 35-yard line. That play was dead in the water. Tennessee read it and the cutback. And Ole Miss is on the move, a 15-yard gain by McCluster. Oh, a, a tremendous play. You're going to see in the backfield, Dexter McCluster is by right stopped right there. That's Wes Brown right there. Wait, wait, actually, excuse me. That's Chris Walker, number 84. Had him in the backfield, but Dexter McCluster showed his ability to stop and change direction, get outside. Pretty darn impressive. Direct snap goes to Bolden. And the sophomore pushes his way to the 32-yard line. Could have been a little bit of disaster here. You're going to see Bolden and Grandy right there bumping into each other. That ball, a lot of times in those situations, if, if the ball is not secured, can end up on the ground. Bolden, good job. You can see right there, they bump shoulders. Good job just keeping a really bad play from developing there by Bolden. Yeah, Bolden last week against Northern Arizona, 85 yards and ran off a 45-yard touchdown. 
Again, the direct snap. It's the same play they scored on earlier. McCluster, 10-5, touchdown, Ole Miss. Number 22, next to McCluster for an Ole Miss Rebel touchdown. 32 yards in the first half. This is a McCluster half. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this Tennessee defense is a McCluster right now. Monty Kiffin, the longtime NFL, I consider him legendary coach, defensive coordinator from Tampa Bay. I'm surprised that was the exact same play that McCluster scored on his second touchdown. They came back and ran it again. You don't see that happen to a Monty Kiffin coach defense very often. Joshua Sheen will try the extra point. Ten carries for McCluster, 126 yards, three touchdowns. We're still in the first half with 6.59 to play. McCluster makes it 21-14 Ole Miss, and CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. In this first half, it's been a quick strike. Ole Miss offense, eight plays, 75 yards, 32-yard run by McCluster. And time now, see for our Home Depot tools to victory. Well, the number one tool for the Ole Miss Rebels is number 22, Dexter McCluster. You see the three touchdowns. This on the sprint draw, first series of the game. And then two times in a row, the exact same play. They moved John Terry and Jonathan Jerry into right guard. He pulls around the left edge. Number 77 right there, Barry in the defensive end. Gets Andy Harvin out in front of him, and then Dexter McCluster does the, the rest. This is a Tennessee defense that is a very good tackling defense, normally speaking. Today, they're having a hard time even getting a hand on Dexter McCluster. You know, Tennessee allows less than 19 points a game. Ole Miss, 21 here in the first half. 6.59 to play. By the way, 16th nationally. In total defense, uh, 295 yards a ball game. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss is spreading them out and making it look very easy. Dexter McCluster, he did tell us, you know, he wanted to play last week against Northern Arizona. He only played two plays, but he said that week off really helped him physically. And he looks he looks pretty darn sharp right now. Ritter moves it away from the 30-yard line. Good kick, settles in around the three-yard line, and Oku for Tennessee. He lost his shoe back at the seven. And Oku tackled down to the 23 yard line. Boy, I tell you, that's running right. That's running out of your shoe. <laughs> that is pretty impressive. He didn't break stride. Alan Walker with the special teams tackle. Oku pedals back and <laughs> he just <laughs> stepped right out of it. Took about three strides before he kicked it off. And Oku tackled at the 27 yard line. I think he could still beat you in a 40-yard sprint with one shoe off. Yeah, what do you say? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, I'll talk to you later. Not if he gave me a 20-yard head start. 21-14 <laughs> and a first-half shootout here. And actually, Tennessee back on the attack offensively, not much. As Hardesty is wrapped up around the race after a two-yard gain. Wednesday on Showtime, JB, Phil Sims, Chris Collingsworth, and Warren Sapp will come your way with the Emmy Award winning Inside the NFL. Cable's longest running show Inside the NFL Wednesday on Showtime. Hardesty picks up two, second down eight, as the clock runs up on six minutes to play in the first half. Crompton, under center. Flag, flag zipper throws it out to the fullback, Austin Johnson. And good pursuit by Ole Miss to the 31-yard line. Johnson grabs his fifth catch of the season. Cornell and Vaughn there to make the stop for the Rebels. Well, Tyrone Nix, he told us in our meeting on Friday that he hasn't been really pleased with his defense's play as of late. Especially from the corners. Especially from the corners, exactly right. Another third down situation. Third down and five. Crompton under center. Ole Miss shows blitz throw and incomplete. Dangerous pass by Crompton in traffic. Johnny Brown, the strong safety, flirted with his second pick of the season. Not a good decision by Jonathan Crompton there. Johnny Brown knew exactly where that ball was coming. And fortunately, Crompton put it behind him. 
was not able to bring it in. Tyrone Nix told us that he said he felt like this, this defense was not really focusing, had a few more missed assignments than are acceptable, paying attention to details. He really wanted to turn it up with this game here today. Cunningham, high, high hanger, and a fair catch at the 36-yard line by Marche Green. We'll step aside, 524 to play. First half in Oxford, Mississippi. Associate head coach Ed Orgeron was the head coach here at Ole Miss. From 05 to 07, Orgeron's career record with the Rebels, 10 and 25. Orgeron spent last year, Steve, at his home state as an assistant with the New Orleans Saints. And of course now uh, with Tennessee, also a defensive line coach. And many of these players on the field today, Coach Orgeron, a big part of recruiting here in Oxford. No doubt about it, Craig. In fact, Marcus Tillman, the defensive end for Ole Miss, told us that he should be credited. He brought a lot of these players that are playing so well for Ole Miss. He did a great job recruiting. Obviously, the, the translation on the field wins and losses was not enough to, to keep him here, but brought in a lot of really good quality players. And this had a, had, had a big hand in building this program to what it is now. No, well, yes, Houston, not two other players aware. And, his, and all he said, he looked at it and says, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're aware. In round, Tennessee played it well. And a loss back to the 32-yard line. You know, Lane Kiffin and Coach uh, Ozeron, uh, Ozeron uh, previously coached together. See, back at USC, they won the national title together back in 2004. And there they are, Kiffin on your left and Ozeron on your right. So that Pete Carroll staff, talented. And a talented team to go with it. No doubt. And I think Lane Kiffin, very excited to have Ed Ogeron on his defensive staff. Smooth the handoff of Cluster to the 38 yard line. Well, Marcus Thompson, strong side linebacker with the tackle. Craig, you know what's so hard to, to, to control and to measure with the plus? You see how he takes off running one way and gets the whole flow going one way, and then he has the ability, because he's so small and so quick and explosive, to change direction better quicker than anybody else on the field. He gets him running one way, and then he's so quick and he's got such a burst that, boom, he takes it back the other way. These are designed cutback plays that Tennessee has no answer for at this point. Three wide outs loaded up to the right side. Steve in the pocket, throws a guard up and, oh, climbing the ladder is McCluster. Don't forget, he's 5'9", and maybe on a good day goes 170. Yeah, that ball would hit one of us in the chest, but he was fully extended trying to bring it in. Jevin Sneed wants to put a much better ball on Dexter McCluster. If he gets that ball on, on the money to Dexter McCluster, McCluster has a chance to turn it up and possibly get that first down. But because of it having to stretch out to make the catch, we see ten, uh, Ole Miss punting here on fourth and four. Campbell back inside his own 30-yard line. Rogan awaits the kick at the 18-yard line. Long snap count. Kick is away. High, high hanger. And a fair catch. Logan at the 22-yard line. And there was contact. No flag on the fair catch at the 20. They're going to mark it at the 21-yard line. Timeout in Oxford. We'll be back on CBS. 1-14 lead on Tennessee. In fact, this week in Oxford, a special guest made a visit and talk to Ole Miss football. You're at a point now where you've got to get your focus on what we're going to do here from here on out. Last three tough games and our bowl game, what is this team going to be known for? Is it going to be known for high expectations that we didn't meet, disappointment, or is it going to be known as, hey, you know what, this was the group that pulled together, started it, built the foundation, and got things rolling this way and it's up to you uh, Tony Dungy brought in by Houston Nutt you know we talked to Ole Miss uh, on Thursday Friday and you get the feeling Steve that Dungy's visit made a big uh, made a big impact and why because you mentioned the fourth the number four ranking earlier this season a loss at South Carolina they lost here at home to Alabama a road loss at Auburn and all of a sudden the kids were thinking what we could have done we haven't and yet they're still, still trying to save the season Yes, we see Hardesty 
dropping ahead a nice little middle screen set up but you're exactly right Craig now Houston Nutt knows what this program has accomplished in, in a very short time I mean they this team has a lot to play for both these teams have a lot to play for but he wanted to get the message because the culture of losing is so deeply embedded in this program he wanted to get the message across by somebody new and fresh to say hey listen there's a lot of a lot of things to play for this year and when you hear that from Tony Dungy these guys took it to heart I guarantee you that second down and ten is dropped it again on the center handoff big hole right side oh a little stumble and Hardesty nearly stops himself at the 32 yard line but there's a flag back of the 20. And I think Jacques McClendon the uh, right guard called for holding here's Steve Shaw holding number 66 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot with he's second down. That's the center, Cody Sullins. He's got a twin, Corey Sullins, playing right next to him. Look at the key players today. Crompton, 80 yards, 9 of 13. Hardesty, 28 yards on seven carries. Sneed, not a lot of yards, but he's been very consistent in the cluster of the big story. That's the key guy right there, if you ask me. They're, all those guys are playing well to this point, but the difference in the ball game is the smallest guy in the field, number 22, best in the cluster. And the penalty makes it second down and 20. Under three minutes to play in the half. From the shotgun. And trying running right at the heart of Ole Miss's defensive front is Hardesty. You look at the timeouts if needed here as the clock runs at two and a half. Tennessee with three. Ole Miss two. This is a very dangerous situation now at the end of the half, backed up third and long. I would expect to see a screen pass or a draw play right now to Tennessee. They don't want it. This is a very good Ole Miss defense we talked about, especially on third down. You don't want a disastrous play to happen right now. Three wide receivers set. Hard to see your long back. They're going to swing it out of the flat. That ball was tipped, dropped, incomplete, but another flag down at the 11-yard line. Well, that was the screen pass I was talking about, Craig. They had it set up but not enough to get a first and I think Ole Miss was kind of playing for it. Back to back holes. Lock it by the way at 6-5. Holding number 66 on the offense. That penalty will be declined. Wow. Fourth down. Back to back holes by the senior center. And how about Lockett was able to bat that ball down. He's 6-5 and he's on the field with a fever. Yeah. He, he was in the hospital last night. 103 fever. Most people, including us, did not expect to see him playing in this game today, showing the heart of a warrior out there. Well, Cunningham needs a big boot. His longest this season, 58, and launches this ball around the three-yard line. High hanger, taken, no fair catch, green, and Ole Miss with good field position at the 39-yard line with 154 to play here in the first half. And coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman will be with scores and highlights plus a preview of today's clash between top-ranked Florida. The Gators taking on the old ball coach, the Gamecocks of South Carolina. That's all coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Well, this is not what Lane Kiffin wanted. Get backed up in your own end zone. Third and long, two consecutive penalties in kind of a, a short, little ineffective punt, giving Old Miss the ball at the 40 yard line. And the Wild Rebel again, there's Dexter McCluster. He's hopping, he's skipping, breaks the tackle 30 at the 25, and high flies to the 22 yard line. <laughs> Can you believe McCluster? Is this guy not absolutely incredibly fun to watch play football? I mean, look at him flying around out there, whoop, up and over. He just makes you hold your breath every time he gets the football in his hand. I tell you, Ole Miss, uh, Tennessee is probably not enjoying it too much. Ole Miss, two timeouts remaining, three for Tennessee. Randy this drive, drives a go outside and turn the corner, and he's knocked down around the 24-yard line. McCluster, a one-man wrecking crew. Three touchdowns, a career high, 15 plays versus Tennessee's 26. He's outgained the Vols by 50 yards. Unbelievable. I mean, it is impressive. And, Craig, I will tell you right there, that play they just ran where McCluster handed it off to Grandy, he could have kept it again on that same play back around the left side. There was nobody out there on the left side again, which would be the right side of the Tennessee defense. I think he could have kept it again. So there's a lot of debate 
in both the college and pro levels about the so-called wildcat offense. It's a flash in the pan, or is this here to stay? I think it's definitely here to stay in college. Uh, the teams are getting more and more creative with it, but in the NFL, it's a different animal. As you know, the, 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 the athletes are a little bit different. The game is a little bit different. Uh, and, and teams have tried to do it. Now, there's only one team running an effect of that. That's the Minnesota, or the uh, Miami Dolphins right. with Dan Hennings calling the plays. But it's going to be in college football for a long time. Randy in motion. A cluster. Pushes his way down to the 11-yard line. Now, time a factor as we're just over a minute to play in the first half. Well, you don't see it happen too often where this little man hits it between the tackles, but he's showing right there that he can get up in there, not afraid to stick his nose up in there and get what he can get, another explosive run. About 12 plays now, over 10 yards by Ole Miss in the first half. And I think probably 10 of them are by Dexter McCluster. The lone back, Snead under center. Play action pass over the top. That ball is batted down incomplete right on the hip of LaMarcus Thompson. Did it hit him in his back? Well, he's turned a little sideways and nearly able to pick that ball off. You want to see how tough this little kid is? Watch what? I shouldn't say little kid. Watch him come out here and, and absolutely take the legs out of a, a defensive end right there, giving the lane to Jevin Sneed to get that ball. And Jevin Sneed would like to have that ball back. A little bit higher. What is a tough throw? A little bit higher up and over the helmet. And that ball would have been a touchdown. 50 seconds of play in the half. Need three-step drop. Timing pass to the end zone. No! Shea Hodge went up high. Shea Hodge playing with incredible confidence. And then Devin Sneed just said, I'm going to let my playmaker make a play. Hodge has got it. Both hands on it. Nope, nope. Can't quite bring it in. He put the hands up thinking touchdown, and Hodge lost the handle. Uh, Last week, Hodge, a career day, 169 yards, seven receptions, and a pair of touchdowns, and that went over Northern Arizona. And then completion stops the clock, 45 seconds of play in the first half. Sneed, back to the air. Bounces that ball short of McCluster. And you know what? That just reminded me of the game against Alabama. We saw some of those same throws early in the first half against the Crimson Tide. Well, that's a result of nothing more than just not getting the feet set. Jevin Sneed is too talented a quarterback to make a throw like this. I think he was committed to going up the field. Last second, he tried to come off and dump it to McCluster. He kind of short on it, didn't get his feet set properly. That ball goes into the turf. Well, Joshua Sheen, a senior from Oklahoma City, a 28-yard field goal attempt. He's 7 of 7 this season inside the 40-yard line. And the kick is away. And no good! The chip shot from 28. And the first miss of the season inside the 40. So Tennessee, I'm guessing, feels fortunate that they hold Ole Miss to no points on that drive. Oh, incredibly fortunate. Bird's eye view here in Oxford. Craig Willard, Jack Steve Burline, our CBS crew as we head down the stretch of the first half. 21-14, Ole Miss. That 28-yard field goal that was missed by Sheen. Steve, put that one down, remember, because it would have given momentum to Ole Miss heading into the uh, into halftime. But remember, Tennessee will have the football to start the third quarter. Right. That, 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 there's a big difference between being down seven and being down ten at the half. Not that Tennessee can't score here, but 37 seconds, 80 yards to go. If you're like an old miss, you're hoping that that 30 back and short field goal miss does not come back to Hot Harvey's D lines up alongside Compton. Three timeouts remaining for Tennessee here. If they need him in the second quarter, throws it up for grab, ball incomplete. Double coverage. Lewis was there along with Vaughn. And the intended receiver was Moore, number six. He got that touchdown pass earlier in the quarter from Compton. Well, I like the confidence that. Offensive coordinator Jim Chaney is showing in uh, Jonathan Crompton for sure coming out. I, there was a man running down the middle of the field that I thought would have been a better opportunity for Crompton to throw it to. He drew Kendrick Lewis, the safety, all the way over to the left side. Tennessee's going to stretch the field. Three wide receivers, two to the near side. Instead, they go to the ground. 
And a hard run by Hardesty past the 25 up to around the 28 yard line. Well, 21 seconds and counting here in the first half. That's Lane Kiffin just saying, you know, we took one shot and see if we can get a big play. We're just going to run it out and make sure nothing bad happens here. Lane Kiffin replacing Philip Fulmer after great success at Tennessee. He'll head to the locker room, the youngest head coach in college football. Houston Nutt follows, and that ends the first half with the score. Ole Miss 21 and Tennessee 14. We now go to Tim Brando in our New York studios. Tim. Half time in Oxford, Mississippi. That's the pride of the South. Ole Miss marching band entertaining at halftime. The Rebels lead Tennessee 21-14. Second half coming up on CBS. The hometown Ole Miss Rebels lead Tennessee 21-14 as we get start uh, hit start uh, the third quarter here in Oxford. Craig Bullerjack along with Steve Verline. Hope you enjoyed the first half. Steve, real quick, uh, it looked like it did. In fact, the offense dominated two very good defenses in the first half. Yeah, you, you come into this game, you're going with two pretty darn solid defenses in Tennessee and Ole Miss. Two defenses don't give up a lot of points. And boy, right there in the first half, we saw the Dexter McCluster show for Ole Miss and Jevin Sneed playing very well. On the other side of the ball, Tennessee. Two big touchdown passes from Jonathan Crompton. Both offenses playing well. Defenses need to pick it up. Whichever team executes best on defense is going to win this game. And you talk about McCluster, 16 touches in the first half, 188 yards of total offense. Yeah, the, the man's been absolutely amazing. Uh, you don't, I don't even know where to start. We picked a few plays here. We could have picked a bunch more, but every time number 22 has touched the football, something good has happened for Ole Miss. In fact, they even ran the same play twice. That was the second touchdown of the day. Here's the third. Same exact play at the other end of the field. Dexter McCluster showing us it can be the same result at both ends of the field. A touchdown. But I'll tell you what, his ability to make people miss and to accelerate into the open field, take advantage of any, any mistake in pursuit by a defense is truly amazing. This kid is very, very talented. If they can keep him on the field healthy, He's got a lot to offer. First half trends between Tennessee and Ole Miss. Crompton threw 80 yards and a couple of touchdowns for the Vols. Hardesty just nine carries, 39 yards. The cluster again, the story, 188 total yards. Ole Miss offensively, 260 total yards in the first half. And, Steve, 14 first downs. Yeah, so the, the, almost twice as many total yards, and that's a lot of it related, obviously, to Dexter and McCluster. But... I think this second half, Tennessee gets the ball to start the second half. I think you're going to see a nice dose of Montario Hardesty and then the play action, which has worked very well for him. We talked about it. A big difference between being down just seven to start the second half, and if that field goal would have been good for Ole Miss at the end of the first half, 10-point lead would have been a little bit harder to overcome. Ritter put his leg into it. Here comes Oku, three yards deep in the end zone. Has room at the 20-25 turns the corner 30 35 and is spun out of bounds at the 42 yard line kendrick lewis with the special teams tackle but oku nearly broke it around the corner well when he made the decision to come out i thought it was a bad decision but oku right there proved me wrong took it back all the way across the field right there using his blockers trying to get outside use rogan out in front of him but kendrick lewis came and finally shut the door but a good 43 yards picked up on the return 41-yard return by Oku, and Tennessee, terrific field position to start the second half, down by seven. Prompt another center at the 41-yard line, eye formation. Play action pass, Crompton sold it, throws, pitch and catch, it's caught at the 41-yard line, and Denarius Moore making another fantastic grab, Cassius Vaughn with the, uh, the tackle. You look at the first half possessions, three and out on the two first two possessions. Then Tennessee, Steve, somehow regroups, back-to-back -back touchdowns, and then two punts, and again, three and outs. Yeah, and the, the, the three and outs are what really concerns, I think, Lane Kiffin and John Chandler. They, they, they do not want to get the ball back in the hands of Ole Miss and Dexter McCutcheon. They obviously have a <laughs> Incomplete. Moore was the intended receiver 
And that was Mr. Vaughn. And I can tell you, Craig, it, th there's a huge difference between playing in the NFL and playing in college. That play right there in the NFL would draw a flag on Cassius Vaughn because of the fact that he did not turn around and try and make a play on the ball. There was contact up the field, but in college, these guys can get away with it. It's much more physical at, at the defensive back position. You know, so far, the cover corners have come to play. Tyrone Nix gave them a challenge, as you mentioned, in the first half. Again, play action. They go the other way. Crompton flat, wide open. Gerald Jones inside the 30-yard line, and Jones taken down at the 28. Well, like the misdirection as Crompton sold it and went back across the opposite side. Yeah, with the wide hash marks in college football, that hard play action into the short side, everybody's flowing across the field this way. Jonathan Crompton sets up and has got a good job by Gerald Jones right there. He, he actually was protecting the backside and then let his man go, slipped outside in the flat, wide open. Nobody out there responsible for him. Jones, four receptions, 39 yards. And I've got to think back to that missed field goal to end the first half by Ole Miss. Tennessee has come back with a whole new attitude. Big hole up the middle. On the cut, rumbling, stumbling his hardesty inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. Jonathan Cornell, the middle linebacker with a tackle. Well, no misdirection, nothing tricky about this one. Just a toss, power sweep to Montario Hardesty. A great job blocking. Out front, you had a lot of, a lot of people paving the way, coming around the edge. Aaron Douglas, the right tackle, was the one that got out there in front and made the key block to spring the lane for Ontario Hardesty. Steve on this drive, pickups of 18, 14, and now 15 yards. Big chunks against this very good Ole Miss defense. Play action again. Crompton throws, caught inside the five-yard line. And Quentin Hancock with the reception, his 21st grab of the year, a senior from St. Augustine, Florida. And one thing about Crompton, he will deliver the ball to many different targets Second throughout the afternoon. He spreads it around, and right there he had a great, great sense of the pocket. He stood in there patiently, patiently. There was pressure coming from behind him. It didn't affect him, didn't rattle him. He made the nice strike, took a hit, but you got to be able to do that playing at this level of football. Hardesty lines up seven yards behind Crompton on second down. Hardesty stacked up and dropped back at the 10. Gerald Poe, the nose tackle, with a swim move into the backfield. Super job, Gerald Poe, you're going to see right there, just got into, you could see, he got into Jock McClendon, the right guard, and man, drove him straight back, got that big penetration, and once, once the big man gets two or three yards deep in the backfield before the back has the ball, he's going to swallow up some running back. That's a battle of beef. McClendon goes 325, Poe 330. Third down and eight. Seventh play of this drive to start the third quarter. Crompton, good protection. Flush from the pocket. Go to the end zone. Incomplete. He had two wide receivers in the corner and overthrows. Great job stepping up for the Ole Miss defense. Jonathan Crompton had plenty of time back there. They had the play called. Nobody came open. Crompton does a good job feeling the, that clock ticking in his head, gets rid of the football to, to make sure he doesn't take a sack and have something more they, negative happen. See, Steve, the player who busted that play up was number 95, Emmanuel Stevens, the defensive end, putting pressure on Crompton. Now Daniel Lincoln will try a field goal, low snap to kick his away, and from 27 yards, Tennessee opens up the third quarter with a field goal. And they cut Ole Miss's lead to four, 21-17 on CBS. A special moment, Ole Miss honoring the 1969 team. And speaking of 69, how about the third-ranked Tennessee ball 7-0 going up against Ole Miss back in 69. Archie Manning, the Rebels crushing the Volunteers that day, 38 to nothing in what has become known as the Hee Haw game. Now, Tennessee linebacker Steve Kiner fanned the flames, talking about Ole Miss just days before the game, saying, Hee Haw, them's not horses. Them mules. <laughs> Thus he haul. And I'll tell you, there's some people that might think that was the last time Ole Miss beat Tennessee. In fact, it's only been since 1984. 12 straight, the Volunteers have beaten Ole Miss. Uh, today, the Rebels trying to make a statement and say we're going to put an end to that streak. So Lincoln's 27-yard field goal trimming Ole Miss's lead at 21-17.
See how important the score on that opening drive. I don't care if it's seven or three, right? It was a good, solid drive. Sure, disappointing it didn't end up as a touchdown, but they were going to need to score more than just seven points this half. It's good to get something on the board, get that confidence going. Grandy, short kick, take it inside the 10 yard line. Grandy, still on his feet, turns the corner, and he's taken down at the 25 yard line. Time now for our AFLAC trivia question. Name the only two coaches to hold a winning record against John Vaught. You stumped me. I'm going to give you time. You have the answer. Always. It's in my <laughs> hip pocket. <laughs> 11.45 to play third quarter. First offensive series here for Ole Miss to start the second half. They swing it out to the flat. Guess who? McCluster with running room. Little stop and go, picks up an extra three or four yards on that move up to the 41-yard line. First down, more yards from a cluster. And let's take you back, Steve, to that final drive of the first half. Well, Ole Miss had everything going for them right there. They had a nice opportunity for the touchdown. Shea Hodge couldn't bring it in. Ole Miss had to settle for what would be considered a pretty easy chip shot field goal just outside that right upright. And Houston Nutt knows that those are the kind of plays in a close ball game that come back to haunt you. Ole Miss went right back to their money man, McCluster. Oh, he is tackled and thrown back. And that was with a little uh, attitude. Was that McCoy? Rico McCoy. And there you see the first half for Ole Miss. Started out just perfectly. And you know, really, I'll tell you what, as opposed to the opportunity to, to turn the ball over, that's one thing that Jevin Sneed in these SEC contests has not been consistent in protecting the football. Today, no turnovers, and his team is sitting on top of the scoreboard because of that. Second down and nine. Look at Jevin Sneed. Again from the shotgun. Throws near side, pitching catch, Shea Hodge. Running backwards to the 41 yard line. <laughs> he had the car in reverse. Now they do some very creative stuff, this old Miss. Offensive football team, a lot of motion around, trying to get those quick passes, get their playmakers in the open field. We talked about it, Shea Hodge, as you said, almost skating backwards the last two or three yards on that play, but, boy, he came close to popping this right up the seam. 17-yard pickup, back to the other playmaker. McCluster flag is down, and McCluster bumped out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Flag down around the 42. Holding, number 78 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That's Sowell, the left tackle. Number 78 this week. Days all new with stupid human tricks. Robert Pattison and John Mayer. Plus Monday, catch Sharon Stone. Then Craig Ferguson welcomes LL Cool J. It's only on CBS. Well, these are two of the most, or the, I should say two of the least penalized teams in the SEC. Both of them having penalties inopportune times today. Oh, no. Intercepted. Wes Brown. Thank you. Number 94 at 6-4. He's going to take that football with him. Take a look at what Snead did on that play. He wanted McCluster, pulled it back, and went to his second man, Bolden. Well, you saw Sowell right there, the, the left tackle. You're going to see right here, he's going down to cut Wes Brown, but he did not complete the block. Jevin Sneed is expecting him to be down on the ground and throw the ball right over the top. Didn't work out that way. Back in Oxford, Ole Miss 21, Tennessee 17. Our aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by DirecTV flying high above this afternoon on a gorgeous day. Bought Hemingway Stadium, 60,000 strong and a lot of orange still in the stands. And a ball game here in Oxford. 
See what we have to talk about, too. Tennessee is very advantageous when they get the ball on turnovers. In fact, the last two ball games, seven takeaways, and they have made their opponent play. Six touchdowns, one field goal. They scored 45 points. On the, on the season, Craig, I'm sorry, on the season, that was their 20th turnover. The previous 19, their offense has scored on 18 of them, 15 being touchdowns. Crompton on the outside, incomplete to Moore. Look. Well, Tim Penn State, 10th ranked in the country. The new Lions, by the way, 12 0 all time against Indiana. In round. Little trickery, Gerald Jones. Barely gets to the edge. And Patrick Trahan on that bad ankle, able to chase him down. Both these linebacking cores of Ole Miss and Tennessee, Steve, they really go sideline to sideline. They do. Watch the block, though, after the handoff by Jonathan Crompton. You're going to see Lockett coming up the field, and Crompton is going to come back. And that's what the block that springs the play right there. The quarterback showing he's not, real, not not afraid to get down and get dirty a little bit. That gave Gerald Jones the corner for a nice little pickup on second down. Yeah, he knocked down Kentrell Lockett, 255-pound in. Third down. Call it a yard, yard and a half. Power formation. And that one was slow to develop. Marche Green came up from the left corner. And Hardesty had no place no place to run well you're gonna see marche green he had no hesitation right here on the edge of the screen straight up the field and just unblocked and i don't know i don't understand why austin johnson the fullback number 45 ran right by him you know he had an assignment his assignment obviously was trahan number seven but when you see a color the opposite color flash right by your face what are you going to do most of the time you're going to try and pick up that Exactly guy. right. If Austin Johnson makes that block, they might have had that conversion. Battle of Wills, Mississippi, number one in the SEC in third down defense. Knockdown incomplete. Knockdown, 8.29 to play. Ole Miss stands and holds. In Oxford, Ole Miss 21 and Tennessee 17, 829 to play third quarter. And coming up next here on CBS, don't miss it. Top ranked, number one ranked Gators of Florida taking on the Gamecocks of South Carolina. That's coming up next. And you know what that means, Steve Verline. That's the old ball coach taking on Urban Meyer. Steve Spurrier at one time, the head coach of Florida, 122 wins along the way, won a national championship, six SEC titles, and in a very short time, Meyer, 53 wins, two SEC titles, and two national championships. Two, two pretty darn good football coaches right there that uh, helped raise Florida to all the greatness that they've achieved in the last 15 years. Be a fun game to watch later on. In motion, Jesse Grandy. And nothing fancy up to around the 42 yard line. McCluster in Tennessee able to wrap him up. Time now to answer our AFLAC trivia question. And I ask, can you name the only two coaches to hold a winning record against John Vaught? And the answer the pair, Paul Bear Bryant and Robert Nealon. Neelan would have got me. I, I had a little help. I could have figured out Bear Bryant. Bear went four and three. And General Robert went three and two. Sneed. And passed the 45 to the 46-yard line. So Sneed showing he's got some legs. Chris Walker ran him down. And there's the Bear and the General. How about the national titles? Ten between those two great coaches. Like the house too bad. I would have been able to dunk back in. Definitely without ever being bold once again. Yeah. Someone needs to get it started, Craig. Why don't you start it? Uh -huh. <laughs> Third down and one. Steve the hand out with Bolden. And a bold call right up the gut to the 47-yard line. All right, Timmy, thanks for the John John Hancock update. As we're back here in Oxford with a stiff arm, that side goes with Speedy. Dexter McCluster. Herman Lathers, Dennis Rogan for Tennessee, team up to make the tackle. McCluster, 170, 
and throws out that left arm. Well, I'll tell you what, they, we talked about what a great tackling defense this Tennessee volunteer defense has been all season, but right there, Rico McCoy, the outstanding senior linebacker, was in position to bring down Dexter McCluster for no gain. McCluster gave him the old stiff arm you're talking about and got to the corner, and that shouldn't happen. I think McCluster's about half his size. 20th touch for Dexter McCluster here in this ball game. Make it 21 as he slides past the 35 up to the 34 yard line. Lathers and McCoy in on the tackle. Did not call Rico's number much so far in this ball game. He averages eight tackles a ball game and leads his team with 76 coming in. Well, and, and same with Eric Barrett. We haven't seen much of him uh, today, really. Nothing that stands out. But I'll tell you what, what I have noticed in the second half. I think Monty Kiffin probably got into this Tennessee defense pretty good at halftime. They are playing with a little bit more urgency trying to get to the football, and they're bringing some pop with them when they get to the ball carrier. Ole Miss backfield split with second down and 10. Jevin Sneed in the pocket, throws a dart up and over, caught inside the 25-yard line, line, and Shea Hodge with another grab. Key catches in this ball game, first and 10 of the 22. We talked about Monty Kiffin. There he is. Relishing the opportunity to coach with his son. After so many years in the NFL, being regarded as the number one defensive mind in the NFL, he's brought an attitude and a spirit to this defense that they hadn't seen in a while. You know, he says, I call him coach. He's talking about Lane, and he calls me dad. I'm <laughs> a cluster. <laughs> Inside the 20, they'll mark him at the 19-yard line. <laughs> Well, the two mentors for Monty Kiffin, and you're talking about some some legends, Bob Devaney and Tom Osborne, University of Nebraska. And if that's who you learn from. You know you learned a, a lot. Yeah, th those are two pretty impressive people to have learned under and studied under. Monty himself was quite the athlete, quite, a, quite an athlete all around during his days. Bolden takes the direct snap and powers his way past the 15 up to the 13-yard line. Eighth play of this drive, and I tell you what, right now the offensive coordinator for Mississippi, uh, Ken Austin, mixing up the plays very well. And this again is almost a little collision right there between Bolden and Grandy coming across, but Bolden just shrugs it off and says, you know what I'm supposed to do right now? I'm supposed to run right up this hole, right up the middle, and get as many yards as I can. That was a nice game on the second down. They're going to measure it. Big Dan Williams, number 55, right on the legs of Bolden. First down. So first down at the 13-yard line. 30 carries, 18 passes. The play selections today by Ken Austin, the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach for Ole Miss. He's been working extra overtime with Jevin Sneed, just trying to get his mind. And, you know, he told us if Jevin can just have a short-term memory, if, there, if there's a miscue, a fumble, or an interception, forget it and move on. Bolden again tackles the front line of Tennessee to the 11. You're exactly right, though, Craig. That was one of the things that Ken Austin told us. You know, Jevin Sneed is so competitive and so uh, has such high expectations of himself that a lot of times he has a hard time getting over the negative experiences that he has. And, and that's why it's so important he wanted him to, to come out and get off to a good start this game. He did. He's played very solid today. It seems as though he's let go of that, that fluky interception in the last series. So they go down to nine, and the whistle stops play. Timeout, Ole Miss. That's their first time out of the half. So Ole Miss will burn their first time out of the second half. And 3.38 remaining here in the third quarter. So 3.38 to play, third quarter. And Steve, right now, remember the missed opportunity by Ole Miss. Almost the same position to end the first half. The Rebels are right back on the front porch knocking. They are. They're knocking. And, and, and Tennessee has been only average in the red zone. This is one of the areas they need to work on for sure. So you would expect Ole Miss to have a few, a few answers to whatever problem Tennessee might try to pose here. I, if I were Tennessee in this situation, I'm trying to find something to stir it up. Ole Miss has a good rhythm going right now. I would try to find a way to put some pressure 
get some penetration in the backfield, try and make a big play to get that defense excited out there on the field right now. Old Miss is keep doing what you're doing. Try and find creative ways to get the ball to Jevin or to Dexter McCluster. Calls his number, drives, and spins out of a tackle inside the 10-yard line. And McCluster is pulled down by Dan Williams at the 7-yard line. Good solid tackle by Dan Williams. McCluster, you can see him trying to slash back across the field, but Dan Williams has different ideas. Dan Williams receiving high praise from a guy who I know from my NFL days, Chester McLaughlin, who's a very well-known defensive tackle for many years in the NFL. He told me in pregame warm, he's now an intern on the University of Tennessee staff. He said this Dan Williams is a real football player. Great size, 6'3", 327. 43 tackles coming in, and he's been in that pile all day long. Handoff off the left side. Bolden inside the five, and that looks to be another first down. That should be first and goal. Ole Miss at the two-yard line, and Bolden is slow coming up off the turf. Well, just a good, solid physical run by Bolden and Ole Miss. They pick up the first down. No trickery there, just tucking it and going. He took a shot on that left hip. He's bumping into everybody, though. <laughs> Hartman. Hartman <laughs> just bumped him. The fullback, 43. Yeah, Poe is in there right there. You see him playing fullback right here. That's the big defensive tackle. Is this the fridge play? This, is, this must be. Sneed. Bolden. Touchdown. Oh, but a whistle. flag. A flag is down. And guess who let him through? The fridge. Yeah, it was, it was. <laughs> for the snap, delay of game, number four on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Well, you're going to see right there, Poe is going to just go straight ahead, and someone happens to get in his way right there. But, uh, I'll tell you, I would not want to be on the receiving end of whatever it is that he's offering. So the fourth flag thrown against Ole Miss, only one tossed against Tennessee. Twelfth play of this drive as the clock runs up on two minutes of play. Third quarter. First and goal. Sneed, pitch out. McCluster has room. Can he turn the corner, makes a stutter step, puts a hand down, and is then tackled down oh. at the one. Can you believe second <laughs> and third effort? Eric Berry. Finally brought down the cluster. Well, this is the true option by Jevin Sneed. You're going to see him going down the right side, trying to take it as far as he can, give it to Dexter McCluster on the edge, and this play should be over right there. That was Eric Berry missing a tackle, then a good solid hit by two or three Tennessee Volunteers, but Dexter McCluster says, you know what? My legs are still moving, and I'm going to try and get this thing to the end zone. 20 touches, 190 yards for McCluster. They go to the big man. Touchdown, Bolden. <laughs> Out comes Joshua Sheen to try the extra point. Bolden, by the way, the first rushing touchdown in SEC play since November 28th of 08 against Mississippi State. It's been a dry spell. They complement each other very well. McCluster and Bolden, they are opposite styles, but they, they both sure know what they're doing. Point after good. 13 plays, 62 yards, and Ole Miss leads by 11. Family such a big part here in Oxford. Archie Manning honored before the game. Big part of that 1969 team, he played from 68 to 1970. Peyton went on to play at Tennessee from 94 to 97. And Eli, Ole Miss, 2000 to 2003, now with the New York Giants. They've got a bye week. And so what do you do on the bye week? You come home and you take in some football. Yes, no doubt in his mind where he wanted to be this weekend. This, this game is too big for the Manning family. Nearly 61% completion rate here at Ole Miss. How about... 13 plays, 62 yards, and Bolden caps it off with a one-yard run. Of those 13 plays, 12 rushing plays. Yeah, I'll tell you, it, it, is a, it is a dream 
for Houston not to be able to run the football, have his team run the football as effectively they, as they have today against a very good, very active Tennessee defense. They've, they've definitely kept them on their heels all day. Kick is away. Oku, two yards deep at the 10. Runs it up to the 20, straight up at the 25, and follows the pile to the 31, 32 yard line. Well, the last drive for Tennessee, not a thing of beauty. They did a good job moving the ball down the field, but you saw a rhythm off a little bit on the first pass. Then the third and short stuffed by Marche Green in the backfield, and then fourth and four. Jonathan Crompton a little bit off on that pass behind Denarius Moore. That spells no success on that last drive. And then Old Miss capitalizes, takes it down the field, scores a touchdown to go up by 11. Two wide receivers set. Crompton under center, first and 10 at the 31 yard line. Little quick throw to the near side, caught on a knee at the 41. And the grab by Gerald Jones, junior out of Oklahoma City. Ooh. And Cassius Vaughn with the tackle. Well, don't forget later in the game, we'll have the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. Well, I think it would be very, very wise of Old Miss here. We got less than a minute left, in, or less than a minute left in the third quarter. I think Tennessee needs to have a little bit of urgency here. They need to have something good happen on this drive to let Old Miss know they're not going anywhere. From the eye, and nothing doing, crashing. Ted Laurent, number 99, making that initial hit. And the ground game unable to really get on track today. And we've watched Ole Miss, that front line, and the linebackers hover in that backfield most of the afternoon. Boy, that was a heck of a job exploding up the field by Laurent. It was like he was shot out of a cannon, knew exactly where that ball was going as we come to the end of the third quarter. And Tennessee will not get a playoff. That's the end of the third quarter. Ole Miss 28, Tennessee 17 will return to Oxford after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship. Tennessee with the football to start the fourth quarter, down by 11. Craig Bowlerjack, Steve Berline. Third down and four. Time for the balls to make a statement right now. Yeah, I, in my opinion, this is the biggest play of the ball game for the Tennessee Volunteers offense, especially. They, they have not had a lot of rhythm this second half. They need to find a way to convert against a very, very tough third down defense. It's got a lot of momentum, a lot of support from the crowd here. Tennessee, Jonathan Crump, they've got to find a way to make a play here to make a statement going into this fourth quarter. Let them know they're not going to fade away. Start the fourth quarter, Crump and under center. Pedals back. Hardesty flush from the pocket. Pressure! And Crompton is down at the 29-yard line. Emmanuel Stevens. Uh, you're going to see Emmanuel Stevens. They, they came with good pressure. Boy, look, everybody's back there. Lockett was there. Emmanuel Stevens. Just a good, hard inside move. Don't know exactly what it was. That got Aaron Douglas the right tackle for Tennessee, but boy, he got beat inside pretty quickly by Emmanuel Stevens. That spelled trouble for Jonathan Crompton. Cunningham high hanger. Marshay Green driven back inside the 30, stacked up. And Ole Miss will have it at the 28-yard line. 4.15 to play here in Oxford. Ole Miss with the lead and with the football. Well, what a game it has been for Dexter McCluster. Three touchdowns in this game, over 263 yards of total offense. Jonathan Crompton has helped Tennessee regroup with two touchdown passes. And then the field goal from 27 yards by Lincoln cut the gap to 21-17. And then moments ago, Brandon Bolden pushes away in from one yard and is 28-17 Ole Miss. And the key players, well, move to your right because it's all about Dexter McCluster. Rushing yards, 190, receiving yards, 63, and three touchdowns, a career high. And, and none, of these, none of these key players have played poorly, but you've got to emphasize Dexter McCluster, the significance of him. He really is the story today. 190 yards rushing, 63 yards receiving. 
and the three big touchdowns. You know, you go back and look at Hardesty's game. He has been corralled in that backfield. He averages 100 yards a ball game. Yeah, he's not had a chance to get his rhythm going. This old Miss team is, is controlling the ball, converting third downs, and, and, and keeping him off the field. Breakaway, McCluster, watch out, 50 at the 40. McCluster, one man to beat, cuts, 20, 15, 10. McCluster, goodbye, touchdown. What can you say about that? 71 yards. I'd like to say it's good coaching by Houston Nutt. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it is good coaching to give him the opportunity, but boy, to have the ability to make this kind of stuff happen, truly amazing. What a great, great run. Extra point, Sheen kicks it through. What a buzz here in Oxford. You have to see it to believe it. 71 yards weaving his way through Tennessee. He heads to the far sideline. Sees a gap, cuts it back, and goes 71 yards. And just making it look easy. What a day. Four touchdowns from a cluster. And Ole Miss, 35, Tennessee, 17 on CBS. Here in Oxford, school record, 261 rushing yards, 303 total yards of offense, four touchdowns, a 71-yard burst. And Ole Miss leads 35-17. Well, he looks like he wants to hit the dance floor. He's made this football field look like his own personal dance floor all day long today. What can you say about what he's done? Now, that was a regular, just a straight-ahead run between the tackles that Houston Nutt was just hoping for a good positive gain that turns into a 71-yard highlight reel touchdown. So now Tennessee, big hill to climb. McCluster, a one-man wrecking crew, four touchdowns, over 300 yards of total offense. Andrew Ritter set to kick away at the 30-yard line. Tennessee needs to make a statement on this drive. Bentley back, taken at the two-yard line. At the 20, 25. That's Denarius Moore, and Moore is tackled down inside the 30-yard line. Regional action tomorrow here on CBS. The NFL, 1 o'clock Eastern. Most of you will see Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. Some will see Jacksonville with the New York Jets. And then the late game, Kansas City at Oakland. It all begins with the NFL today. JB and the guys tomorrow, high noon Eastern here on CBS. And Steve Berline, plenty of storylines around the National Football League. Cincinnati at Pittsburgh and Camden Bengals keep the lead in the AFC North. Jacksonville, New York Jets. How about the Jets? Can they shake off their woes? And, and can the Broncos get back on track after such a strong start of the season? Tennessee comes right back at Ole Miss. Runs it right up the middle. Hardest, he finds the biggest hole of the day to the 37-yard line. Well, and that's, that's patience from Lane Kiffin. He's still looking at the clock saying, under 14 minutes left, we just need to score quickly, but we don't need to get desperate yet. We've got to put together good, solid, big plays, back-to-back, -back, get the ball in the end zone, and then worry about the next drive at that point. You see Hardesty, he limped off. One of the biggest weapons for Tennessee, Bryce Brown, the freshman from Wichita, Kansas. On the field, rolling out, Crompton, still rolling, looking, fires in traffic, incomplete. Donarius Moore, the intended receiver, said to see how this will turn out. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't think any one of us is a standout. It's not a gimme any way you look at it. Crompton throws, finds a seam, and the catch is made. That's Moore, tackled by Vaughn. And Tennessee, I'm sure now, will try to hustle up their plays as Crompton gets them from the sideline. Yeah, you would think there would be some urgency here to, to try and get plays run as quickly as possible. The clock's going to stop, but they're going to try and measure. So 13.02 to play, and they bring the chains out. First down, Tennessee. 
Well, if Tennessee's going to get back in this ball game, Craig, it's not going to be depending upon the legs of Montero Hardesty. You talked about him coming out of there right now. They're going to need to mix in some run, but they've got to make some plays through the air. They've got to be able to protect, keep this old Miss defense that knows they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more now. They're going to have to keep him off of Jonathan Crompton, then Gerald Jones and Denarius Moore. Quentin Hancock are going to have to make some plays in the passing game. Three wide receiver set. Crompton pedals back. Five-step drop into the flat. Big gain, first down. It's Hardesty who's back in, trying to shake off that, that injury to the 39-yard line. Kentrell Lockett for Ole Miss is back on the field. It's out of the defensive end, and Hardesty has to go back off. This may be one of those games or one of these series where you have to make a play, get out for a play. Well, one of the things, too, that I think Lane Kiffin and John Cheney are realizing is that Ole Miss has kind of gotten into a little bit of a prevent mode. And they're going to just keep taking those chunks if they can get them now. Old Miss coming with a little bit of pressure on this play. Off right tackle goes Brown. Bryce Brown, freshman, picks up two, maybe three. LaJuan Scott and Jonathan Cornell team up to make the tackle. Craig, you know in our conversations with Tyro and Nix, I, I would not expect him to sit back in a, in a prevent type defense for too long if Tennessee starts making positive plays happen. I think Tyrone Nix is going to mess it up or mix it up a little bit, try and find a way to get some pressure on Crompton. That was a gain of two, second down eight, as the clock runs under 12 minutes to play. Crompton throws, caught, and close to a first down. That's Hancock, Quentin Hancock, with his second grab of the afternoon. That was a good, good solid read by Jonathan Crompton. They came with the corner blitz off of his right-hand side. It was Marche Green coming off the edge. Crompton calmly took the ball, threw it outside, threw his hot, picked up a nice game, another first down. Crompton's numbers, 159 yards passing. Last week, 331 yards, five touchdowns in that win against Memphis. Under center goes Crompton, sets up a screen, deep drop, and Ole Miss, did they read that? And guess who? In the hospital last night, with 103 fever, Kentrell Lockett with the tackle. Well, Kentrell Lockett, you're going to see him right here. He sniffs this thing out from the beginning, does a great job. He's not oversized, he's not very big, but he can really move, and he's a very smart, very explosive defensive end. He knew that was coming, had the ability to close the gap on Hardesty. A huge loss of 10 yards, 11 yards for the Volunteers. Dr. Lockett on Thursday, that kid is full of personality. Tennessee going back to the air, trying to thread the needle incomplete. And the intended receiver was Hancock. And that stops the clock with 10.32 to play. Brings up third down at 21. Uh, Quentin Hancock's got to make that catch. A little bit of traffic in there. Maybe heard some footsteps, but he's got to bring that ball in and take the hit. His team needed him to pick up that 10 or 11 yards make this third down more achievable. And see, again, you're going against the number one ranked defense in the SEC in third down conversions. Yeah, third and 21, I think I give the edge to Ole Miss here on defense. They set a four wide receiver set, one in motion. Probably trying to get about half of it back here. Crompton sets and throws. And first, pardon me, to the original marker at the 29-yard line. So a big pickup. Really nice throw by Jonathan Crompton here. You see Hancock just sitting down. Marche Green knew it was coming, but that ball was on a rope in the perfect spot. And Marche Green just barely missed that ball. This gives Tennessee a realistic chance to make the field goal now. You're looking at a 45-yard field goal. So Lincoln is in. His longest 49 yards. This will be a 45-yard attempt. Third block field goal attempt by Lincoln this season. That ball was a line drive. I don't know if it really ever got off his foot. I think it hit somebody in the belly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who it was that blocked it. We'll find out. But that ball never got above head height. Snap is good, and a line driver. Well, that was Lockett that got his arm on it. 
That was helmet high. It was. It hit him in the armpit. Remember, Tennessee had a chance to upset top-ranked Bama, but Daniel Lincoln's 44-yard field goal blocked by Terrence Cody. It was Cody's second block field goal on that day, and the celebration was on. Yep, that, there, there's a pattern. That's the third, at least this year. And that ball never got out, as we said. Pretty easy block for Contrell Lockett. The cluster spins his way to the 31-yard line. And that's very frustrating for Lane Kiffin. A lot of people probably wondering why he was going for a field goal there. Well, they're down three scores as it is. If you get the field goal right there, you're down two touchdowns and one two-point conversion. So you might as well take the three when you when you think you got a chance at it. Clock running, Ole Miss happy to let the clock run up 35-17, second down seven. Andy Hartman, the fullback, McCluster. The tailback in his eye formation. The cluster stops and goes. And Tennessee shuts down the motor at the 36-yard line. Rico McCoy with the tackle. Now Red Lobster presents today's Scholar Athlete. And it's Ole Miss guard Reed Neely. How about a 3.06 in business? He was named the SEC Fall Academic Honor Roll both in 06, 07, 07, and 08. That's Reed Neely and Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the Ole Miss General Scholarship Fund. A big old lineman right there. Way to go. Three-year letterman out of Jackson, Mississippi. Before the snap, whistles and a timeout. Ole Miss will step aside. 8.28 to play in Oxford. The Rebels on top of the balls. 35-17. It has been a Dexter McCluster kind of day. 23 carries, Steve, 269 yards. That is a new rushing record here at Ole Miss for one game. 172-yard average, and I'd say Ole Miss has had their way. Four touchdowns for McCluster. What a day. What a day. And he's going to get fed the ball a few more times here. There's still eight minutes, eight and a half minutes on the clock. He's in the Wild Rebel right now. Jevin Sneed split out way up top over here. They fake it to McCluster, and the ball carrier is Bolden, who bowls his way to about the 39-yard line, so move the chains first down. So the clock will continue to run after they reset it, and now Bolden's going to limp off. And you saw Hardesty limp off for Tennessee earlier on their last drive. And now I see a flag at the 40. I don't know if it's an illegal huddle or substitution. It's the only thing I can think of here between plays. Well, Houston Nutt asking the same thing as you see Kiffin on the sideline for Tennessee. And you know what? I'm wondering if, the, yeah, Tennessee must have asked, bring the chains out. They wanted to, uh, they want to make sure this is a first down. Well, now they're going to send the chain game back. I'm wondering what, what the flag is doing on the field. There's no flag on the play. We had a legal formation. Thank you, Steve Shaw. Wayne Kiffin, youngest coach in Division I, 34 years young. Replaced Philip Fulmer, really Mr. Tennessee. No doubt about it. And Lane Kiffin, we asked him what his top priority was, and I thought he'd say just getting Tennessee back on the map. Well, he said, yes, that's definitely one of the main priorities, but recruiting. He had to find a way to get the recruiting back to where he felt it belonged for Tennessee. Not much to the 42-yard line. Rodney's got the ball carrier. But they're still a pretty darn good football team, in my opinion. We'll see how Garcia, <laughs> yes, they are. Garcia fares tonight for South Carolina. Enrique Davis. 
with the ball. So he'll make his first carry in this ball game. And right now, Ole Miss with a comfortable 35 to 17 lead. The win today, Steve, will move the Rebels to seven and three. Three and three in the SEC West with games still remaining against LSU here at home next week and then at Mississippi State. Well, that makes that LSU game next weekend. If they can hold on to this, this game, they're up by 18 with 640 left to play in the game. That LSU game becomes huge next weekend. Play action as Snead sets his feet and throws. Sliding catch complete by Hodge at the 41-yard line of Tennessee. Boy, Hodge has just made big catch after big catch today. That's his fifth grab, 77 yards. And usually when he makes a catch, the chains move. Yeah, he, he is, and Jevin Snead likes it, but he is a very good all-around receiver. Does not have the, the, the speed that Mike Wallace, the rookie for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who was such a factor with this old Miss offense last year. They're still lacking that speed, but boy, Shea Hodge is so reliable, so good with his hands and with his route running. He's a guy that Jevin Steed has an awful lot of confidence in. We got the playoff with about five seconds on the clock. Enrique Davis with his second carry. And the clock runs under six minutes. Well, Craig, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier. One of the one of the really important factors, I think, that that Houston not really wanted to establish in this team is that, hey, maybe we can't achieve all of our goals. Our goal was to win the SEC, get to the SEC championship game, win the West, try and find a way to get themselves in that national championship picture. They can't achieve all their goals, but there's still a lot of goals they can achieve this year if they finish it out right. Golden breaks the tackle inside the 20. Well, the ground game has been near perfect for Ole Miss. You know, going back to Coach Nutt, he said, who stops the run? Who can run? Well, Houston Nutt, you've stopped the run, and you have run the football today. He did say that very emphatically. Who's going to stop it? Who can run it? Boy, to the tune of about 300 yards rushing, this Ole Miss team has just ran this ball right down Tennessee's throat. And I guarantee you, Tennessee was not expecting to be this easy for Ole Miss. 44 carries, 355 yards on the ground for the Rebels. Sprint, and it's handed off to Bolden. He breaks the tackle, trying to go back the other way and lose his yards. They will mark Bolden down at the 27. Dennis Rogan, the left corner, number 41, with the tackle. Well, Monday on two and a half men, can Charlie resist temptation? when a gorgeous new roommate moves in. Well, find out on a new episode of TV's number one comedy that's Monday only on CBS. This is a Tennessee defense, Craig, that gives up on average for the season 119 yards rushing. They've given up 345 to Dexter McCluster and company today. I thought McCluster may be done, but he's back on the field wanting more. Cuts it back inside, still on his feet. <laughs> it's amazing the balance this young Number man shows every time he touches the football. I thought he was down around the 24. Montori Hughes is a huge Montori defensive Hughes. lineman that wrapped him up and that, 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 that what well, you were just talking about, Craig McCluster limping a little bit there. That is the last thing that Houston not wanted to see. But well, you wonder why they even threw him back in. Uh, you, you know what? That, that, that's a good question. Montori Hughes, 312-pound freshman, is the one that brought him down there. Bolden back in the backfield. As Snead rushes out of the pocket, wants to throw, does, and then tosses it into about ooh, the first or second row. And I believe the catch was made by a cheerleader down around the end zone. <laughs> and that was a late hit. Rico McCoy, a little frustrated. He knows better than that. Jevin Smith throws the ball away. Oh, yeah. I think McCoy. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number five on the defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. I think that is a case where Rico unloaded some frustration on the day. I don't think that you, they were expecting Rico, not, Rico McCoy not to hit Jevin Sneed. It's just to try and make an effort to not to finish the hit. He didn't pull up at all. He went right through Jevin Sneed. That's the kind of play that a quarterback can get hurt on. Tennessee calls timeout. And McCoy heads to the sideline. Sneed heads to the sideline for Ole Miss. 
and everybody on their feet here in Oxford. Quite a performance by Ole Miss today. 35-17. Down the stretch we go on CBS. Well, tomorrow, James Brown hosts one of the most inspirational hours in sports television. The Aridi Honors for Courage in Sports presented by the U.S. Marine Corps. Past honorees include Muhammad Ali, Peyton Manning Tiger, Tiger Woods, and Hammer and Hank Aaron. That's tomorrow here on CBS. Well, plenty of stars for Ole Miss, but the biggest is Dexter McCluster. Well, when you look at Jevin Sneed, nothing too impressive. He's done what the coaches asked of him. It's been the Dexter McCluster show all day long. No doubt about it. When Sneed's needed to throw the ball, Shea Hodge has been on the receiving end most of the time. Another good, solid day for him. But, you know, Jevin Sneed, I think, if you asked him coming into this game, if he would take those numbers with the success they've had in the running game, I don't think there's any doubt about it. He would have said, for sure, this keeps us in the hunt. We've still got a chance to accomplish some great things this year. And this just builds confidence for next week's home game against LSU. McCluster back in. Breaks a tackle inside the five-yard line. Well, the kid goes 170, and he will deliver a punch. Well, we talked about it. He, he tells Coach Nutt he can handle the beating. He can take it 30-plus carries. He wants to show Houston Nutt he can do it. That's 25. That's 25. Houston's giving him a chance. They just pulled him out right here. That... They're giving him a big hug on the side, and that might be the end for Dexter McCluster today. 282 yards on the ground on 25 carries. He's earned a few hugs from that sideline, I guarantee you. Enrique Davis replaces him at the tailback. Second down inside the five. Davis stutter steps, stacked up, and the guys in white have not quit. Number 20. Lathers made the initial hit. The middle linebacker, number 34. Well, let's talk for a second, Craig, about this Tennessee team and what, as we look at right there, you got LaMarcus Thompson down, obviously in some serious discomfort. Now, the trainer's on the field. And I'm looking at all-purpose yards, by the way, single-game record. Deuce McAllister, back in 1999, 317 total yards. Dexter McCluster, 324 today. Well, he's setting records left Whoa. and right. We'll step aside. 240 to play in Oxford. Well, still down on the field, LaMarcus Thompson. Strong side linebacker. And now they brought another trainer or two, even from Ole Miss, have come out to help. You see the legs moving. That's a good sign. Well, he's been moving through the the whole period but he's in, he's in a lot of discomfort Tennessee fans concerned along with teammates let's see if we can see what happens he's on the left side of your screen right here there he is Yeah, it took a helmet straight in the face mask and driven backwards. And that's where he continues to lie at the about the five yard line. And now they're going to bring a backboard out. You see 42 he stood up and it's took it. a shot right about. I mean that's a face mask. He took it in the face of oh, that yeah, helmet. And it, he just he came down with an awful lot of pressure on that shoulder neck area it didn't look like his head hit the ground first but a lot of pressure on that right shoulder maybe into his back area Marcus Thompson being attended to we'll step aside 240 left to play in Oxford injury of concern for linebacker LaMarcus Thompson of Tennessee he has moved since the initial injury about four or five minutes ago on that last play, but they're being very careful. And Steve, that's what you have to do in this game. Uh, you know it well. College football at Notre Dame, 15 plus years in the National Football League. Well, obvious concern, and as you said, Craig, the, the, the number one priority is to be overly cautious with situations like this. You just don't know 
exactly what the problem is at this point. So you hate to do something that's not smart by moving him in an, in an awkward position where you do more harm than good. So 99% of the time, these situations end up coming out favorable. But obviously a lot of concern for both sides. You see uh, the old Miss Rebels all very interested in, in sending positive vibes out that way as well. Players on a knee. Was such a high intense, high energy game. Of course, uh, there was such a buzz in this stadium after watching McCluster do his thing today, and now there's a hush in Oxford. But again, Steve, it's it's uh, they will take their time as they roll him to one side and then get him flat back on his back. We have seen movement, which is really the a, a very good sign. Twenty two year old junior linebacker. You know see everyone always asks and you, you've been in this position before after an injury that stops play for 10 12 15 minutes. How do you really mindset yourself just to finish this thing out. I mean that's the most difficult part as teammates are huddled along the sideline and with great with great concern. Well, obviously, the, the number one priority in everybody's mind, the football game now takes a back seat to the, to the health and, and making sure that this young man comes out of this on the right side of things. Lane Kiffin very concerned and not happy with how his team is performing, but this is, this is the priority now. But as soon as he's safely on his way to get the care that he needs right now, uh, these guys know it's a job. Their, their job is to go out and finish the game and, if they don't do what they're supposed to do, someone on their team is going to get hurt. So their focus has got to get back to the task at hand. They'll do it. Uh, but uh, a lot of a lot of minds and a lot of thoughts will be obviously going to uh, LaMarcus Thompson. You know, so impressed with his care, both by Tennessee trainers and Ole Miss working together. They've got a stretcher and we'll take him off the field. You know, a lot of times, Craig, too, one of the issues is this is so hard on family members to, to sit there and just not know exactly what's going on. And even though they, if they were down there in the huddle and there may be some family down there, we don't know. But if they're down there, they can be assured by the training staff or by the doctors that, hey, we're just being smart. We're just being careful. Uh, very difficult situation to have to watch from a distance. And everyone on their feet here at Oxford. And again, great care for LaMarcus Thompson. He'll be taken off the field here on a stretcher and then moved over to a to a makeshift golf cart, which will be able to transport him off the field in a hurry. And there the thumb is up. Go. Oh All yeah. Right. The thumb is up. And the golf cart won't be needed. They're just going to roll him to the uh, sideline, take him to the locker room. And LaMarcus, we wish you the best. You know, isn't it amazing? You see that thumb go up, and you just all of a sudden start breathing a little bit easier. Yeah. You just, okay, he's saying we're going to be all right. So you're going to see again one more time. He's on the edge of the screen there. And Andy Hartman doing his job, just caving him down inside. And might, may have been right there, yeah. actually. I think it was Reed Neely, number 71. Of course, you're playing the game of football. Those things happen, but uh, it was helmet to helmet. And, and so here we go. Ole Miss on the pitch. Half of the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Well, Bolden dives up and in. Nothing tricky about that one, Lane Kiffin. This is not what he had in mind today. Really felt like even through the distractions this week of the legal issues facing three true freshmen on his team, he thought his team had a good week of practice. They were going to show up and play well today. This second half has just been a, an absolute domination by the Ole Miss Rebels. Now the ground game has been so ahead. Sheen kicks the extra point. 
and splits the uprights. It's a 42-17 ball game. Ole Miss. Ole Miss running away from Tennessee, 42-17. Bolden just scored, but Steve, the story, Dexter McCluster. Well, Dexter McCluster, four touchdowns on the season coming into today. Four more touchdowns today. He has been unstoppable. You know, he gave, he got the rest last week from Houston Nutt, trying to get him healthy. I think it was a very, very wise decision by Houston Nutt and his staff to let this guy get healthy for the stretch run. Obviously, they're using him differently than they went into the season. And during the season, he's listed as a flanker. They wanted to use him more on the receiving side of things, but he's shown himself to be so effective lined up behind Jevin Sneed and in that wild rebel formation. Houston Nutt said, I can't fight. I've got to put this kid back there. We've got to get the ball to him. Oku inside the five-yard line at the 20. And then push out of bounds at the 26-yard line. 2.25 to play. Tennessee back on offense. And make sure you stay tuned here on CBS. Coming up next, number one ranked in the country, the Florida Gators taking on South Carolina. Road game for Urban Meyer taking on the former head coach of the Gators in Steve Spurrier. 9-0 are the Gators. Carolina stands at 6-4. And, and Florida allows only 10 points a ball game. That leads the nation. That's coming up next here on CBS. Crompton under center. Tennessee. About 11 yards on that carry. Bryce Brown. Uh, impressive freshman out of Wichita. Hard to see the senior. Brown will be the future for Tennessee on their ground game. And it's a furry up offense. You see Tennessee under Lane Kiffin, of course. Trying to just work their way back. This is a step backwards, yes, but they'll have another chance next week to take on Vandy and then finish up at Kentucky. And I think Lane Kiffin's expectation level now, sure, today did not go how they wanted it to go. They were hoping to get into the major bowl picture. This is a big setback today, but this team has accomplished an off, off, almost picked off by Cassius Vaughn on the outside. But this team has accomplished a lot, and they are now truly making progress this year, I think. If you look at what they have accomplished, especially in the last five games leading up to this game here, they've earned some confidence. They're starting to get back in the national scene. They're starting to get the attention from not only the media, but from the recruits. And this is the team that if they win their last two games against Vandy and Kentucky, they can still get to a very good bowl game and have a lot to be proud of this year. 151 to play. Third down and six. Crompton, quick drop, hits a hot slant. Ball is caught and dropped at the 49-yard line by Moore. And time now to check out the outback play of the game. Well, we had a bunch to choose from. Most every one of them, in fact, every one of them involving that guy, Dexter McCluster. He took this ball in the third quarter, went 71 yards in a touchdown. The most impressive of a bunch of impressive runs by Dexter McCluster. Now, Dexter, again, you have to uh, go back to our visit on Thursday. I'm fresh. I feel good. I can carry the ball. I can take the pounding. I know I'm 170, but I use my size to my advantage. And you know what? He's trying to convince people, and maybe he did that today, that when you're small and you can run uh, in lanes, you, you don't get hit as hard. De kind of deflected hits. Uh, he's got such a unique skill set. His explosiveness and his quickness and his... You know, tremendous instinct as we see another slant from Jonathan Crompton. That one to Montero. That's uh, Den uh, Denarius Moore, excuse me. But he's got such a unique skill set that uh, uh, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see where he goes in the NFL draft when this thing is all taken care of. He's opened up a lot of eyes today, I guarantee you. There's people that know who he is now out there that didn't know who he was coming in today. Bryce Brown. Powers his way up to a 35-yard line. Yeah, it's going to have to be the right team that, sh that that picks a Dexter McCluster. He has to fit into that certain scheme. Well, there's a QB in the stands here today that would probably love to see him up there in New York. Through the hands, incomplete. Bryce Brown, the intended receiver, has cropped and had to rush that throw under pressure. That stops the clock with 106 to play. Second down 10, coming up Florida, number one ranked at South Carolina. We'll see that game shortly here on CBS.
Ole Miss bowl eligible. And they have set the table for an opportunity to finish this season very strong and land themselves a high profile bowl game. Exactly right. And, and, and just to confirm the fact that this is a program that is really making progress and deserves to be talked about with the top teams in the country. Hancock, the intended receiver, incomplete. That's what remains for Ole Miss. You'll see it on CBS next week. LSU rolls into Oxford at 7 and 2, and then the Rebels travel to Mississippi State to close out the season on the 28th of the month. So, for the second year in a row, they just announced that here in Oxford, and the crowd applause. Tennessee runs to the 30 yard line clock under a minute and what's left for Lane Kiffin and the Vols well Vanderbilt back home Bandy two and eight a rough year and then facing Rich Brooks on fourth down that's that's going to wrap it up for Ole Miss but Rich Brooks will will be a challenge that last week of the season going to Kentucky So they exchange possession. Ole Miss defense strong today, but the offense stole the show with Dexter McCluster. Jevin Steed, Steve, I think as you mentioned, this game a confidence builder. They had this three-game stretch. Next week, LSU, and then at Mississippi State, Sneed taking steps back to regain confidence. No doubt about it. And, and, uh, he, he has got such great potential. And, we talked to Ken Austin about it. You know, there's a lot of people talking about whether he's going to come out this year or not. He's going to take a knee here. I think the uni universal opinion is that he would benefit more from coming back for his senior year next year because he does still have room for growth and maturity, and he's going to be a tremendous player one way or another, any way you look at it. He's got great size at 6'3", 220. Through the one interception today as the Gatorade is tossed on the back of Houston Nutt. As Ole Miss is bowl eligible for the second straight year under his, his guidance. Final seconds. The Dexter McCluster show will take a bow. 282 yards rushing on 25 carries, four touchdowns. For Steve Berline, Craig Bowlerjack, we say so long from Oxford with a final score. Ole Miss 42 and Tennessee 17. Coming up next, the Home Depot SEC continues here on CBS. Number one ranked Florida takes on South Carolina. 42-17 Ole Miss. And this has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship.